What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, so y'all ask and y'all shall receive, man. What's going on with you? Who, uh, who tapped in first? Appreciate you for already hitting that like button. I told you we was going to do it a little bit different, y'all. Request the fish room. So we're going to be in the fish room. Seven people, what's happening, what's happening? Hoping everybody uh, had a good weekend. Hit that like button for you one time. Stu Smoke, what's happening? What's good with you, bro? How was your weekend? Hit that like button as y'all come in. Hit that like button. Everything good. That's what I'm talking about, man. Uh, man, I was supposed to be doing this, um, doing this live a lot, a lot sooner. I came into the fish room. Hold on, let me pin this comment. I, uh, I came into the fish room and was looking at that 240, and I was like, man, I need to. I need to do something about that. I need to do something about that, man. Um, you always always looking at aquarium, and I don't see no fish. You know they're always hiding. They're not that big, so uh, I got everybody up out of there. Took everybody out that tank, moved them all around. Got one down there to sixty. Got a couple over there in other sixty. Threw some in that two twenty five right there. I threw like three in the pond behind me, and uh, I don't think I got left in there as a turtle right now. Also, I went ahead and uh and fed everybody because you know it was uh that's what it was time for. Drax over there wigging out in that tank. But yeah, so that's what it was time for. And uh yeah, I won't be getting rid of that shark. I won't be getting rid of that shark. Um he's actually eating, you know, he's been eating he's been eating uh shrimp. So on occasion he'll eat a little bit of um He'll eat a little bit of a silver side, but for the most part, he's liking the shrimp. So happy about that. You know, I only had to spend about a hundred dollars to figure out what he likes to eat, but now at least now I know, you know, and uh yeah, so he's gonna be staying with the fish corner, he's gonna be staying here with us. Mine's are the same, have to the man all year. Still crazy. Oh yeah. He ate the first day, I remember. Yeah, he did eat the first day. He ate a little silver side inside that little styrofoam container. But that was it. That was it. He didn't eat again for the next few days. Um, so I was worried. You know, he ate a little piece of food every now and then. But for the most part, he wasn't eating. But now, you know, his stomach is looking fat. He's definitely eating now. So I'm happy about that because I wasn't ready to take him back. You all know I wanted that horn shark. So... Didn't really want to give up, but, um, you know, sometimes you got to wait the fish out. Mo, what's good with you, Mo? What's happening, man? I've been, I've been checking out the videos, man. Uh, I'm glad you decided to go salt, man. Get on the salty side, man. I'm glad you did that, man. And the fish room looking good. Stan's looking on point. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, I picked up another red Zoa. Uh, for the saltwater tank just uh, the matter of fact yesterday and uh, oh yeah also you can't see down there matter of fact you can at 125 on the floor I resealed that today Mo I resealed that before I fed the fish and I dove into the 240 
So this room is stinking. You know how that silicone smell room stinking. But uh, it's sealed up. We I'm going to take that in the house. I'm going to take that in the house, swap out that 75, turn that 75 into that 125. And uh, I'll probably drop the 75 down there, maybe. Drop the 75 down there. Might take the 25, put the 25 down there, too. I don't know. But, yeah, yeah, been busy, man. Definitely been busy. What's been good with y'all, though? Y'all ready for that work week? Man, I need a, I need another day. I need another day off. But I'll be busy Monday and uh, Monday, Tuesday, heavy. Yes, sir, Mo for That's a fact. Definitely on it. Did you reseal your aquarium yet? I know you were talking about how you have to reseal yours. Did you reseal it yet? I'm thinking with that 240, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm kind of thinking I want to move. I kind of think I want to move the Jardini in there. Maybe not right away, but I'm thinking I'll move the Jardini in there. And if it don't work out with Albino Silver and the Pine, I might throw them in there. Or I might throw them in there first. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. That's what I'm on the fence about. I'm on the fence about that. But right now, it's empty. Just got the turtle in there. I definitely got to get the turtle up out of there. But, uh, yeah. I don't know who I want to see in there yet. You know, eight-foot aquarium, plenty of room. Got to be something nice. Still got to get all those all those uh, hybrids out of that 225. As soon as I do that, get the, get the African cichlids in that 225. Add some more with them. Uh, no, I never had a uh, no, I never had a tank fall. That one twenty five right there. Which what you talking about, Mo? I'm kind of confused. Kind of confused by that. I never, I haven't had one fall. But that 125, that's the one that I had under the other 125 that I used to like store all my salt water. I make my salt water in it. Oh, yours failed? Yeah, yours failed. So which one is that? I know you said you had to reseal it. And Stu Smoke. Yeah, I'm turning that 75 into a 125. You know, I got some fish in there that eventually would have had to move out sooner rather than later. So now I'm um, prolonging that process. You know, the, the hippo tank get, get quite big. Got the line fish is gonna get bigger. My Nassau tank, you know, I want to add some more fish in there to make it look a little bit better. So yeah, I'm turning that uh, I'm turning that 75 into a 125. Long overdue. So I'm gonna repeat the process, build a nice aesthetically pleasing um, stand for it, paint it to match the decor in the house, all that. Yeah, I'm gonna do it now. I have to reseal that thing, man. I have to reseal that tank. That's why I said I resealed it tonight. Definitely can't do it now. Oh, the whole back shattered. Damn. Oh shit. Yeah, Mo. I thought you had a tank that you had to uh that you had to reseal. I didn't know if that was the one that uh that fell and shattered, but yeah, you yeah, you're not fixing that. I think that's the one where you're talking about how you could take the panels out, reuse the panels for like a plywood build. Man. So is it better to do the um, do the live in the fish room? Is it better? You know, you don't really get to see that much. The lights off on that joint over there. The discus are right here. Drax right down there on the bottom. Is it better in the fish room? Right behind you, the saltwater tank and Lisa Ray is swimming like crazy. Okay, yeah, yeah, Lisa Ray is swimming like crazy. Regenerative life wing. You ever think about incorporating? An aquaponic system with your large freshwater tanks would be easy to do. Just add bed, grow beds and uh to your freshwater tanks and grow your own vegetable fruits. Yeah, you know, I thought about it. I have aquaponics up there right um, on the 240, but I'm just growing plants. I just got uh pothos growing in there. As far as vegetables, I'm not I'm not doing I'm not growing any vegetables. Um I tried that and uh yeah, that's not that's not something that I plan on doing. 
if anything, I would, this is what I probably would do. I'm not going to do it, but if I was to do it, I have my tank draining to outside of the house, go through the aquaponics system, and it didn't come back in. So all of the plants are outside, but I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Like I said, though, I got the aquaponics right there on a 240. And uh, this, you see all those plants back there in that 800. So, yeah, I, I do believe in having plants help, you know, filter your aquariums, your ponds, whatever, removing the phosphates, the nitrates, and all that fun stuff. But um, as far as growing vegetables, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, too much of a commitment, I think. I like to just turn on the plant lights, and uh, that's about it. You know what I mean? I have grow lights on all of the plants that's um and aquaponics but yeah but yeah so thought about it tried it done it did y'all pick up any new fish this weekend clean some tanks build some stands diy bills anybody build a pond anything nando 84 good evening good evening clear hey brother do you find it as beneficial to use bioballs instead of filter socks for filtration in the sump. Um, I like media blocks. I like media blocks. Uh, as far as your sump, all of it work. All of it work. Uh, you wouldn't switch out your you and you would not remove filter socks for bioballs. The filter socks is a mechanical filtration. That's the first step of the filter in your sump or whatever the case may be, like filter floss. The first step. So it's removing the larger organics. Once it passed through that, the water, it should be cleaner. And then that's where, you know, you have the beneficial bacteria. You have your bio balls, your media blocks here, whatever the case may be. I use a lot of lava rock in my freshwater aquariums, um, the, 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 uh, the sumps. A lot of lava rock. And then also, like I said, the media blocks. I use that a lot more. Uh, ceramic rings, things like that. But again, you want to have that mechanical filtration. It's going to remove the larger organics before it goes to your biological media. If you don't capture all your large organics before you go to that biological media, then you're going to have a lot of that backed up. Um, you're going to have a lot of debris, you know, in there with your biological media. Then you got to clean that out. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if you have filter socks, you have filter floss, just throw it away, replace it, and the next two compartments should be clean. Make sure y'all hitting that like button when y'all come into the room. I got 18 people in the room. 10 likes. I know we could get those likes up. Uh, Reezy just waiting on my 60 gallon to cycle. That's about it. Okay, Reezy. That's what's up. That's what's up. Mo Champ added live plants to my 55 with the angelfish, 12 tetra spotted Raphael catfish. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you already know, Mo. You already know the plants are solid, man. The plants is definitely a good way to filter your aquarium. Stu Smoke, are there any plants that can grow in salt water to help with nitrates and so forth. I have a 90 gallon salt water tank. So that's an excellent question. I get that question a lot. Um, the only plant that I know of plant is a mangrove, but it's really a tree, man. Uh, most people want to, I'll show you what a mangrove tree looks like, but they sell them in the stores. Sometimes it's like misleading. They'll sell them and they're underwater. They're not supposed to be in the water. The tops of them have to be out the water. Um, but yeah, mangrove will work. Um, as far as removing the nitrates, though, you're going to want to probably have like macroalgae in a refugium. That's what the refugium is for. The refugium is to help remove those nitrates. You grow some Cato in there, also known as Cheto. You have some macroalgae, things like that, which are grow light. So that's going to be what going to, um, or you're going to have most of the light source on 24 7, and it's going to remove all of those nitrates and things from your water. But let me show you. Let me show you what the uh, what the mangrove plant looks like. All right, mangrove plant. So let's try to show you in a couple of different ways. So right here, twenty live mangroves you could buy from Amazon. So they sell them right here, just like that. Twenty live mangrove plants. 50 bucks. That's a really good deal. I'll tell you that right now. If you go to the store, they probably want $15 a mangrove. But let me show you how big these damn things get. 
All right. So you ready? That's a mangrove tree. Those are the same plants. I don't know if you can see how big that is. Let me uh, show you one more time. That's a mangrove. That's what those little plants are. But it takes a while to get that big, obviously. Um, but those are the only plants that I know that could grow in salt water. Yeah, let's see where we at. Hey, geez, Aquarium, how's the horn shark doing? I just was talking about that. He's doing good right there behind y'all. Uh, I will be keeping him. Um, he's eating He's eating shrimp. Um, I thought that I was going to have to take him back because he, because he wasn't eating. Um, I think it's because I, I kept trying, like, silver sides and everything else. Like, he don't like the mussels. He don't like oysters. He don't like squid, octopus. He don't want none of that. But he eats a little bit of silver side, like a little piece. He ate a piece earlier, and then he he went crazy eating the shrimp. So he's gonna be here. So he's doing good finally. Dominator 55, 58, 55. How's the plywood tank going? The same as it always going. Exactly the same as it was the last time you seen it. Regenerative life wing and building five DIY solar power 100 gallon systems with two filters. A heavy flow settler filter and a moving bed filter with K1 media, one to five systems will will not fruit fish. Haven't decided yet what kind. Okay. Yeah, you definitely got some shit going on. That's what's up. No champ added two added PS2 food ball skimmer to the 20 gallon salt and a wave maker. Okay, Mo, you coming along. That's what's up. Hell yeah. And that's uh, all good, no, no problem, man. Uh, shout out to the shout out, man. Shout out to you, man. Appreciate it. Make sure y'all hitting that like button, man. We got 22 people in the room. We got 17 likes. Let's get those likes up. Tracy Carter. Hey, Cleveland. Just stopping by to say hello. Hello. How you doing? It's 11.30 p.m. where I'm at. So I got to get to bed since I have to be up early for work. Enjoy your night and the rest of the stream. Bye, everyone. Thank you for sliding through, Tracy. I hope you hit that like button as you came in. Brazil. What's going on with you, man? How you doing? Man, day four. Hey, bro, just, hey, bro, my Java fern plants are dying while in my sun. And I'm trying to figure out why. Do plants benefit from having an air stone to break the water surface? No, um, no, Nando, you don't have to have that. But what you do need to do is make sure you got some good grow lights on them. That's the main thing that you got to have. Good grow lights. Do you have good grow lights on those plants? uh 10 30 there 824 here 824 here like i said i intended on getting this starting this live like an hour and a half ago but i had to one feed these fish make sure everybody fed because i knew this live was going to go at least an hour or so uh i sealed that 125 gallon tank for the people that just stepped in and then I did remove everybody from that 240. So I don't have no fish in my 240 gallon. I just got my turtle in there right now. But uh, yeah, need to figure out what I'm going to put in there now. I might still do some more reconfiguring. Looks kind of, eh, you know, took out the same, put, put back in the same rock that I took out. I'm kind of ready for a change. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I know if I add some sand up in here, I know it'll make me feel a little bit better. Get rid of all that, all the river pebbles. The river pebbles look nice, but yeah, might be time to get rid of that. Miami native. What's going on with you, Miami native? They see what's going on. Loving that koi pine. Wouldn't mind having one built, but, I, uh, but I'd make it an African peacock stock pine. Keep pushing your content and dropping tools. I appreciate that, Miami native. Um, yeah, man, you over here in Miami. You over there. I'm assuming you're in Florida, man, Miami. So, uh, you know, y'all could do that. <laughs> you know, we can't do that. We get cold. We get cold, uh, cold winters. You know what I mean? Um, cold nights. What's, what's the temp right now? It's probably warm right now, but it get cold out here. So, you know, we can't do that. Yeah, that, uh, that gold koi is so beautiful. Let's see what the weather is. Or, I mean, what the temp is right now. All right. Let's 
let's see, 66. So it's already kind of cold for some African sickness for us. All right. Nando, I have a light bar set to 10 hours on the timer every day, same time. Yeah. Shower fern. Um, why don't you get some plants that, why don't you get some plants that, that don't have to be fully submerged in water since it's in your sump? Why don't you get like, you could get some pothos, you could get elephant, you get hella big. Why don't you get some of those plants that don't have to be fully submerged? So that way, you know, a lot of plants that need the CO2, you know what I mean? They do not, not the, uh, the flow or anything like that. They need the CO2. Uh, you know, Anubias don't quite need that. You know what I'm saying? Anubias is one of the easiest plants to grow. Sores are really good. But, you know, if you're having plants die back, sometimes that does happen. But since it's your sump and it's not in your tank itself, just get some plants that, you know, grow really well in the water. But, you know, come out the water. Get you some peace lily. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're just trying to remove the nitrate. Get you some like, peace lily. Get you some, uh, get you some pothos, get you, what else? Shit, man, anything, you know what I mean? Anything that could stay, you know, that could, that could really live in water like that, but you don't have fully submerged. It'll grow a lot better. They'll do a lot better job of removing those nitrates from the water, you know? Oh, champ, I have a brand new 75 waiting on the hybrids. Yeah, yeah, man, they waiting on you too. They right there, man. How many, <laughs> man, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, I'm catting, I'm catting because I still don't know how much it's going to cost this shit, but you know you're going to get them. Like I, like I tell you, you don't, you're probably the only one that will get those fish. Um, other than that, you know, they might end up turning to feeders you know, or go to the pet store. But, yeah, we're going to make sure we get you those fish, Mo. That's a fact. Regenerative life, when I am looking at putting zebra plecos into my large deep water constant flow grow beds zero plecos would be perfect living beneath the growing plant food roots and large grow beds yeah yeah i think they would too i think they would too ryan what youtube fish channels do you follow or get inspiration from ohio fish rescue sickly bros cavemen aquatics etc i actually did a video on this about a year ago man i used to watch a lot of different fish tubers, you know what I mean? Uh, Joey, King of DIY was the first one that I started watching when I came, when I got into the hobby. Started watching after that. Started watching like Andy Wood Cichlids. I was watching Guapatel Mel. I was watching um, Aquarium co op I've watched Caveman Aquatics before. I've watched Boss Aquatics. I've watched Mr. Feed the Fish. I've watched Prime, um, Prime what's it, Prime, Prime Cichlids. I've watched um, KG Tropicals. I've watched King and Queens. I used to watch IFG. I was watching Paul Cafaro. I was watching Nick Bingo. I was watching uh, uh, Catch Em All Fishing at one point. Uh, I think I said Predatory Tennis. I was watching Stingray Biology before they merged together. Um, you know, I, I've watched a ton of these, um, Aquarium Domain, you know what I mean? Big Fish Lad, uh, it's, it's so many, you know what I mean? There's so many cats that's doing fish videos and you can pick and choose to, you know, treat it like a steak. You can take, you know, what you use from, what you need from it and, you know, throw away the rest. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot that I used to watch as of now. I really just watched the ones that kind of fooled me. Oh, yeah, I, I missed out on, I didn't miss and didn't mention, like, Mike. Mike loves life's aquatics. Um, yeah, it's a bunch that I, I used to watch. It's a bunch that I used to watch. I don't really watch a lot of YouTubers now. I don't really watch a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, just don't have the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to spend a lot of time doing that. But now, I'm just focused on the things that I got to do myself. But... I think many people could learn a little bit or a lot from each one of the each one of the people I named. So, yeah. Oh yeah, and then I definitely watched Ohio Fish Rescue for sure. 
All right. I love the Koi Pond. Saw the new addition for what's the net for? Is it to keep animals out? Stu Smoke. Yeah, man. Um, I have a raccoon problem. I have a raccoon problem. I had a, a smaller gold-headed koi probably a few months ago, and it just disappeared. And then one day I seen a raccoon going fishing in the pond. Didn't catch nothing that night. Put two and two together. He got lucky one time. He didn't get lucky the time I seen him. He never got lucky again, but he got lucky that time. So that net prevents him from being able to go in there and go fishing again. It's ugly as hell. And eventually I will catch that raccoon and euthanize him the right way. Um, I'm not going to release him. I'm not going to release him. If I had a pickup truck, I probably would. If I had a pickup truck, I would. I'd throw him in the back of the pickup truck, take him to a location and let him go. But since I don't, I'm not throwing that raccoon in the back of my SUV. So he's going to go. Carl, what's happening with you, man? What's good? Just seeing you online. Consistency is, consistency is key. How are you doing? How's the wife and Carter? Yeah, that's right, Carl. Consistency is definitely key. And um, they're doing good. They're doing good. They're in the house, probably getting ready for bed. Um, I, I'm, I'm doing really good. Had a good weekend, as y'all, some of y'all might have seen. Went to the went to the went to Koi Enterprise, picked up a couple more koi. So um happy about that. Finally got my gold koi. I've been winning that since I set up the pond. Uh as far as today, you know, um sealed the 125 down there, moved all the fish out to 240 gallon, um, got the horn shark eating. I'm happy about that. The tiger fish is eating. Extremely happy about that. You know what I mean? Some of y'all might know and some of y'all may not know that it's kind of hard to get the tiger sharks to eat. So um, he wasn't eating pellets. Guy, you know, um, the guy at the fish store, Tony, he said that he was feeding him pellets. I don't really think that was the case because he, he wouldn't eat pellets. You know what I mean? He wants cut up lot. He wants cut up silver side. That's all he messed with. And, uh, you know. I'm just glad I got him eating. And the same thing with the damn horn shark. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell him about that, man. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell Tony about that, man. He gonna sit there and tell me that he got. He had the horn shark eating silver sides. He don't eat silver side. He's he's shrimp. Small pieces of cut up shrimp. But other than that, Carl, I'm doing good, man. How you doing? How was your weekend? You ready for the work week? Well, champ, how long should I let my salt water, my 20 gallon salt water, suck before adding coral? Set it up yesterday. I will wait until it clear up. I will wait until it clear up. You know, you bought your salt, all your good stuff. I will wait until it clear up. Once it clear up, you can add something in. You know what I mean? I've been adding in. I've been adding in coral since day, since day four or five. You know what I mean? As soon as it cleared up, I was ready to go. So that's what I recommend. Next to Cali Fish Keeper, what's going on? What's going on? How you doing? RV TV 2023. What's up? What's up? But yeah, yeah, y'all asked for me to do the live from the fish room. This is a, you know, asking you shall receive. If uh, if y'all new to the channel, y'all wouldn't know that's an 800 gallon pond behind me. Man, I added in some of those. I added in two of those hybrids. Hybrids, Mo. I added in the larger hybrids. I also added in there. That Jack Dempsey, Jack Dempsey was kind of big, or he looked kind of big. That just lets me know those fish are hella big because he was looking kind of small in there. But I added in a Jack, I added in the Jack Dempsey. I added in the two hybrids, and uh, I put the Cuban cichlid down there in the sixty gallon by itself, and because it was looking kind of stressed. And then I put the Jaguar and my Madagascar in the other sixty gallon. I think I want to move to get. I think I want to move to Madagascar to the other fish room. I put the two smaller hybrids in there with the tank with the other hybrids, and um, like I said, I still got the turtle in there. But I'm thinking that I want to think. I'm thinking I want to have that Jardini in here. I'm thinking I want the Jardini in the 240. They would look hella nice. It would look hella nice. So, yeah. You have to have an empty big ass tank again with all the nice tanks you have and fish huge investments what do you have for backup power in case your grid goes down 
in an unstable country right now? Do you have solar generators or gas, etc.? Um, yeah, I appreciate the compliment on the tanks. Definitely is an investment. Um, it has gone down a couple of times. Luckily, it was back on within a couple of hours. Um, if that was to happen for an extended period of time, I'm pretty fucked. I do have a gas generator, but I wouldn't try to use that on a whole damn fish room. There's no way that it'll power up everything in the fish room. Um, yeah, so, and uh, no solar panels, no solar panels, no battery backups, nothing like that. Just luckily, uh, you know, luckily that hasn't happened. I guess worst case scenario or push come to shove, what I could do is make sure I got one big ass, um, one big ass air pump that will run all the air in this fish room as well as the other one and uh, the one tank in the house. I think that would be the best case scenario. I do got a bunch of I got I got a bunch of air pumps, so I probably could do something like that. But you know, in the past two years, hasn't had haven't had anything like that happen. Like I said, when the storm was really bad, the power was out for a couple of hours. But you know, that was enough time. It was good. Stock the tank's not overstocked. Nobody's fine. No casualties. Mo, how's the Rainbow Wolf doing? He's doing good. I actually moved that tiger fish in there with him. It's a trip. So everybody in that, so everybody in that tank, they eat silver size. They eat worms. I was feeding them some earthworms earlier today, but everybody good. I got the two bichers in there now, the albino bicher, the Delhazy bicher. I have in there um, the tiger wolf. I have in there, I mean the tiger fish. I have in there the rainbow wolf fish, and I have in there the African knife and and a catfish and a spotted raphael catfish. But everybody's straight. Everybody's straight. Pure life. How you doing? Hello. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure y'all hit. Oh, yeah. Make sure y'all hitting that like button. Make sure y'all hitting that like button as y'all come into the room. Eric Aquariums. Yo, what's up? What's up? Finally caught the live and crazy busy. I hear you, Eric. I hear you. Appreciate you sliding through. Nando, how is your corner DIY with the tank coming along? It looks the exact same way. It looks the exact same way, Nando. I haven't done anything to it. It's as is. It's as is. Lisa Ray, did she start coming to the top? Lisa Ray, did she start coming to the top? Like at eating time when she got comfortable? I love when she does that. She be munching out dinner time. That's a fact. That's a fact, Stu Smoke. Um, she's been like that since I got her, man. Um, she was comfortable from the gate. When I went to pick her up, she was already doing backflips. Already doing backflips in there the whole time. So um, that was one of the reasons why I decided to get her. You know what I mean? She wasn't looking stressed out. She wasn't just, she looked like a happy stingray. So, um... From day one, she was coming to the top like that. You know, she's sore right now because the light is on. Matter of fact, now she's kind of like on the bottom. But um, she does a lot of swimming. She's a really active thing, right? She's a really active. She's literally just going around. She's an active thing, right, for sure. But from what I've what I've seen, most of these Cortez stingrays or all of the Cortez stingrays are swimmers like that, unless they're stressed out. If they're stressed out, you know, whether the tank's too small, whether they're uncomfortable because of the tank mates, then you'll see them just sitting at the bottom. But when the light is on, she is just doing her thing. When the light is off, then that's when she's, like, resting. And that's why she got to eat every day. She be burning. She be burning her energy. But, yeah. And she's full grown. In case some of y'all don't know, she that is the Lord, That's as big as she'll get. She's not going to get bigger than that. That is a full grown Cortez stingray. So, you know, um, saltwater Cortez stingrays don't get big. Saltwater blue dot stingrays don't get that large. So, you know, the saltwater ones are a lot better to keep, y'all. They're a lot better to keep. Yes, she needs a bigger tank. Yes, she's going to get a bigger tank. But if that was a freshwater stingray, like this, huge, huge. And I wanted one for a short period of time. I did want one. But they just get too big. They get too big. 
But Lisa Ray is definitely our favorite. I wish y'all was able to. I wish I, I wish it was turned around. Maybe next time I'll turn this couch around and then I'll have everything set up this way so y'all can watch, you know, Lisa Ray do her little, do her laps, man. It's so cool. But yeah, she's she's fat right now. She's fat right now. She ate good. She had shrimp. She had silver sides. She ate some of the oyster. She had uh what else? She ate some of the squid. She eats it all. She is not picky at all. Everybody else be kind of picky. It's a trip. And the older and the bigger the fish get, the more pickier they are. Like my eels, they real picky. Yeah, she's getting it in. She's getting it in. If I didn't think that it would kind of like cut off on y'all, I would turn it around right now. But, uh, Man, y'all know when y'all leave laptops plugged in all the time, now you, then you have to leave them plugged in because if you do, they don't hold a charge. So my laptop has to stay plugged in at all times. Otherwise, the battery just, you know, meanwhile, the battery says it's fully charged. But if I unplug it, you know, it's like damaging the battery, you know. They say the same thing happens with the phone. You shouldn't leave your phone plugged in for an extended period of time. Once it's charged, unplug it so you don't, uh, so you don't mess with the battery. So it is what it is. But yeah, we could do the lives in here more often. This was actually pretty, pretty easy, man. I got the little scrap part right there. That's what's holding the laptop. I got my, I got the mic sitting over here on the, um, on the corner build. Your tablet does the same thing. Yeah, Mo, that's because we left them plugged in too long. Regenerative life, my favorite freshwater fish are freshwater stingrays. And what's AT? I don't know what AT is. But yeah, so do you have any freshwater stingrays? Do you have any freshwater stingrays? Then if you do, what size, what size enclosure pine? Well, hopefully you got them in a pine. What size pine do you have them in? Eric, nice seeing you do another low tech saltwater tank. Started my first reef tank a few months ago since I saw your first old 20 gallon tank video. Always thought you needed that fancy stuff. Yeah, yeah, Eric. I thought, you know, when I first started, when I first started, I bought all the fancy stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I bought all the shit. I started off with a 20 gallon aquarium, spent like $1,500 getting it up and going, bought everything that I heard that I needed. And then after years of keeping the fish, started realizing, like, hold on, I don't really need all that. You know what I mean? Some of that stuff is just unnecessary. You know, one of the people I've seen do it crazy was, uh, you know, I've seen predatory fins when they had that big. What size? Is that? I think that's like it was like a five thousand gallon uh, fiberglass pool where they had the nurse shark at, and then they had the filtration on the on the uh, on the pallet racks. You know what I'm saying? Big ass, big sump. I was like, man, they don't have a refugium. They don't have any of that. You know what I mean? And then I started being able to keep the saltwater fish with just a with, with just a sponge filter. I'm like, damn. If I only need a sponge filter, why do I have to, why am I buying all these other, you know, these other uh, high tech pieces of equipment that's not necessary? You know, it's all complimentary. You know what I mean? On this tank, I do have a sump down there. I do have the big skimmer. I do got another big skimmer that I have put up that I am going to use once I upgrade this tank. But, you know, you don't have to have that. It just helps things. You know, the refugium helps things. The skimmer helps things. The auto dosing helps things. The auto top off helps things, you know. Um, the the uh, what's the, what's, what's the other one? The reactor, the, the calcium reactor, just all of these different things that you have, you know, just kind of like helps it along. But you don't have to have it. But yeah, man, I'm glad that I've been able to help you for sure. Air fish, typo air fish, freshwater and freshwater stingrays can have either in Houston. Yeah, um, as far as the air pima, though, the air pima gets the air pima gets ten foot. So how do you know? How do you know you like them if you can't keep them? How do you know you like them if you can't keep them? You know, so they're, therefore, not trying to not trying to come for you, but if you don't know all the problems that come along with keeping these extra large stingrays or air pima, how do you know that that's your favorite fish? 
living by because if you're living, I mean, if you're living vicariously through somebody else, you don't really know what their headaches are. You get what I'm saying? You know, they sometimes they might or might not put it on, put it on camera, you know, expose it, expose those problems. I get to tell you one thing, having a six foot fish is a problem. You know what I mean? You can't move it nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Blake, literally, that's uh, uh, Blake's exotic animal ranch. He moved his four foot air pyramid from his 3000 gallon pool to his 6000 gallon, which was maybe five foot over and it died. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, predatory fins, you know, they moved, they tried to move their pyramids from Florida to New York and they died. You know what I mean? Like, it's definitely a problem having these big, extra large, you know, stingrays and a, definitely the air pimas, even the stingrays. You remember when, when, um, when, uh, predatory fins was moving and they had, they had, what was his name? They had, um, off the deep end aquatics hold some of the stingrays. You know, they had Ohio Fish Rescue hold a bunch of their stingrays and, you know, they were fighting and have to separate them and, you know how the females get attacked by the males and bite the disc and all that. Those are problems, man. I don't want those problems. I'm cool. I'm cool. Yes, I agree. Glad I saw your video. It's the best start. Best of starts. Low tech and then learning with within time, which you really need for your tank. Learn so much, and I'm glad I didn't rush on buying unnecessary things. I'm glad you didn't either, Eric. I'm glad you didn't either. And like you said, you know, that's and I and I preach the same thing. That's what I preach. You started with the bare minimum and your fish or your coral will survive and you could learn and educate yourself along the way to see what more you will need or what more you'll want. But it's more like a want. You know what I'm saying? It's not a need. You know, when I had that low tech 37 gallon, I was I was surprised. I was surprised at that point because I didn't know that everything that i had in there would thrive the way it did you know with what i had being that everybody else you need the kessel lights or you need whatever alternative you know 500 to a thousand dollar light you have to have uh the refugium and things like that i got the refugium like later on you know what i mean all the corals in that tank was doing amazingly well i had the gym tang i had the purple tang i had the self and tang i had um starfish in there i had shrimp lobsters all that everything just did really well so yeah definitely not needed and i'm glad that you took heed to that i hope more people will take note and uh and really just understand that a lot of people that's like reefers and and really strong-minded about the saltwater hobby they will sometimes say things that's going to intimidate you. They're going to say things that's going to make you feel like that you're not ready for it. And I don't ever want to, I don't ever want people to feel like they're not ready for it. I want you to get started, understand that the method I'm providing will be enough to allow you to keep your fish healthy as you learn. Got some more people in the chat. Make sure y'all hitting that like button, hit that like button one time. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do so. I hope everybody that's commenting are subscribed. If you're not, hit that subscribe for me one time. Thank you. I'm seeing the likes go up. I appreciate y'all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But yeah, so, um, man, this coming up week, what do I got planned for this coming up week for us fish-wise? What do I need to do? I think I'm finally going to commit to getting all the fish out of that 225. I think I'm finally going to do that. I really want to get the African cichlids in there so bad. I really do. I cannot wait to see the African cichlids in there. Um, you know, I want to get some more African cichlids. You know, I want the Malawi hawk. Uh, I would love to get, let me show you, let me show you the most exotic frontosa. I think it's a nice star frontosa. Let me make sure that I'm right. Yep. Yep. The night nice star frontosa. Did anybody have any idea where to buy one of these or have they ever seen one? Let me show you right now. Look at that. That's the most exotic frontosa, the most rare frontosa you're ever going to see. And it's called a night star. Now, these frontosa, 
are expensive. They are, and I wouldn't go to that first one. You got to make sure you find a reputable site. They are $250 per. Per. So, man, I need, I want to get some exotic, exotic African cichlids. They're going at 225 think this side needs to really get some attention i mean we got the discus right there We're gonna have that beautiful african cichlid tank right there we got our og flower horn tracks down below uh gotta figure out something else colorful and that's nice to go under that stand right there but uh yeah yeah i can't wait to finally get those things done and then obviously i know y'all been wanting to get wanting me to get this plywood bill done it's just a lot of work it's a lot of work i'm doing all of this by myself and um i gotta i gotta buy probably probably gotta buy a hundred maybe like a hundred and eighty I don't know. I got to figure it out again. Nonetheless, it's like five, it's like $500 worth of two by six by eights. And then I want to have to stack them up. That's if I want to keep it this design, if I want to keep this corner design, six foot tall, all of that, then yeah, it's going to, it's going to be a lot. It's a lot of work. It's probably like I said, probably like 200 pieces of lumber, you know, and then once I get it, I have to do everything, you know, within, you know, within a few days because I don't have anywhere to just leave. 200 pieces of lumber sitting out where it has to be inside of here. So it's just a lot. It's a lot that's going to go into this build. Meanwhile, I'm trying to figure out if that's, if this is really what I want to commit to. I've already thought that if I chop it down a little bit lower, it'd be better for me. Um, it won't be as big, won't be 1800 gallons, but it will be easier to maintain. But yeah. What do y'all think? Y'all think six foot's too high? The well, water is really going to be five foot. The water was never going to be six foot. So the water was going to be like a foot lower, right above where the window is going to be at. That's how, that's where the water level is going to be. But I'm thinking if I chop it down to like, if I chop it down to, to like four foot, it'd be the height. Oh, that's low. I can't go to four foot. Maybe because that's what's a four foot stand. If I chop it down to like five foot, the water level go four foot. Still kind of big. Still kind of big. Still kind of big, but damn. Just was a showpiece. I don't know. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not really in a rush. I'm not really in a rush because I don't know what I want to do. I want what's going to be the most affordable and easy, y'all, to be honest with you. I've already taken it apart twice. This is going to be the third time. So I just want to make sure that it's something I could live with. And then I can move over to this one right here. But if I reconfigure everything, you know, that might also be better. You know, if I took this out, if I just said, scrap this, we just need a bigger space for for the fresh water. But if I said scrap this, I could bring out this one thousand gallon. I could take it to the corner. Bam. So then that'd be six. That'd be like thirteen feet, fourteen feet from here to there. I could bring it out to probably like right here. So it's about three foot from the wall right there. That's four foot right there. I could probably come to about five foot. By four foot, let's see. Let's do some. Let's do some math real quick. All right. So if I did that, fourteen times twelve. That's one sixty-eight times sixty times forty-eight divided by two thirty-one. See, that would be a two thousand gallon for the salt water. Now that would be amazing, right? But then I got to figure out what to do about the fresh. Like they need more space. So yeah, that's, you know, just really on the fence, really on the fence. Right on Mo, right on Mo, Olivia Discus, one of my favorite, other favorite Amazon fish, used to keep them in a 
harvest their rainwater. You have a full time job with your awesome hobby. It is definitely a full time job. It's work, work, work. But you know, I love it. I love it. You know, and constantly recreating, constantly, you know, changing of designs, building things. You know, it just makes it. You know, it keep the interest. It keep the interest. But yeah, I always just try to do what's best for the animals that I choose to keep. That's that's the focus. That's the focal point. For as long as I do that, I'm happy. Mo, well, do the pond, do your pond first. Redo this right here, but I don't have nowhere to put the fish. You know what I'm saying? I don't have nowhere to put the fish. That would be amazing. Oh, that would be amazing. But I don't have anywhere. You got me thinking. I'm trying to figure out how I could do something like that. You really got me thinking, Mo. I just don't have nowhere to put them. You know what I'm saying? If I if I if I took them out of here, I need somewhere to put them. Y'all y'all know how big Kobe is. Kobe is thirty inches, so I don't have nowhere to put them. Yeah, that's the struggle. That's the struggle. But look, so right, look, right. So that's what I'm saying. If I got rid of this, if I got rid of this all together, right? All I have right here is this, man, the discus though. But hear me out, hear me out. If I got rid of this, if I said screw this quarter tank and I decided to build a plywood right here, take it to the corner. So this is four foot. Matter of fact, this is actually like, like five foot already. That's another six foot. That's 13 foot. So if I went to that corner and bam, that's 13 foot that way. Even if I brought this over to meet it, because that's seven foot right there, I could probably put about two foot right there, another five foot right there. So then that's 11 foot right here. So 11 foot, 13 foot. And then go four foot on both of them. That would just be better. That would just be better than this one corner because, but then I got to figure out what to do with the discus and the, uh, the 75 gallon right here. You know? So it's just, it's, it's conflicts of interest that's going on, but I'm, I'm going to think it, I'm going to figure it out. But I, that's why this thing is really on hold because I need to really think about whether or not this design is what I want to commit to. Yeah, it's a nice showpiece. As soon as you walk in here, you know, it's, there's something to admire, but I feel like I could just do a little bit more, you know, with the space than having just this one corner. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just, that's where, that's where I'm at with things. That's where I'm at with things. So yeah, give me, give me y'all feedback. What y'all think? You think that the corner tank is, I should really just focus on having this corner tank. You think that I should come down? with the plywood from here to here and then the same thing bring that one over to there so like i said we'll get about we'll get about what's that about five six about 11 foot this way about 13 feet that way or 11 feet that way yeah it'd be like 11 11 so 11 foot with this plywood 11 foot with this plywood i could probably move that discus tank somewhere else Got to stay up high because they're looking real nice, right? And just scrap the corner tank. What you guys think? What you guys think? Eric, maybe if you have it shorter, it will look, it'll be less work of a hassle to feed the fish. Yeah. The window was going to already be big, Eric. The window was already going to be pretty big. It was going to be like a four by four window. Coggins, have I seen Paul's new saltwater setup? No, I haven't watched any uh, many of Paul's videos in some months. I haven't watched his in some months. The difference is, though, if I had the money, I would hire somebody to do it, too. You know what I'm saying? Um, I believe that he got ready to apply with that he did, but he also had Hector build it for him. If I had the money, I'd pay somebody to do it, and I wouldn't stress about it. I'd like, tear this down, build this, build this. Done deal. You know what I'm saying? But me doing it myself... It's uh, it, it, more thought got to go into it. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot more work. And uh, yeah, only want to do it once. 
Mo, the new turtle setup you're getting can probably hold Kobe. Nah, I can't. Hell nah. That's only going to be a 300 gallon uh, stock tank, and I would definitely wouldn't put Kobe in there with him. All right, are you getting rare fish or fish that will one day be put on cities list due to environmental changes and loss of habitat? It's important to get collections of these types of fish to save the species. Um, I, I basically, this this is for regenerative life, Wayne. Um, I basically try to make sure that the fish I already have, they have dibs on these bigger aquariums. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I won't go and buy a new fish and probably let that fish have priority over the fish that I already have. You know, so the fish that I got actually get pretty big. You know, the dove eye gets hella big. I got a bunch of those, you know, the jaguar cichlids. Um, even the discus get large. So I'm looking out for those fish first. My Jardini get big. You know what I'm saying? So the fish that's going to have access to these larger aquariums first are the fish that I already have. And then, you know, if I decide to get a rare fish and they can fit into, you know, for instance, the 240 will be open one day, completely open. You know, this 225 is going to move over there where the 125 is. You know what I'm saying? So it's like uh, I'm making room. You know what I mean? I kind of want to phase out, you know, maybe the smaller tanks at some point. So all I do is have is bigger tanks, you know, and the fish are finally you know, in their forever home. But, you know, all of this is just a process. This is where the, this is where the interest stay. This is where the excitement come from because I'm constantly, like, you know, changing things. Um, as I'm talking right now, I'm really thinking about, you know, what if, you know, what if I did have this whole wall over here? You know what I mean? What if this whole wall was, uh, was able to be open and I was able to put fish in there? You know, I could move that 225. I could move that 225. The same place I plan on moving that 225, right on the other side of that tank. You know what I mean? Um, then I would only have to figure out this 150 and this 75 gallon. You know, so it's like it's it's a lot of different possibilities. It's just a lot of work, you know, that's that's gonna have to take place. But you know, if I did that, then I wouldn't have as many enclosures, right? As many tanks to separate fish. But you know. That's why that's why things be on hold. You know, the wheels keep on turning and I keep on trying to figure out the best way of doing it for me and my family. You know what I'm saying? What's easiest for me. So whichever way it ends up is the way it's supposed to end up. I believe that. I believe the more we talk about this, the less that I'm thinking I'm going to do this corner tank the way it is. I think once I deconstruct it, it's just going to stay deconstructed. I already feel like it would be nothing at all to move these two aquariums and then uh, just take a plywood build all the way to that corner and then also take another plywood build to that to meet it at that corner. So 11 foot, 11 foot, I already like that a lot more. I like that a lot more. Just will be so much better. And then I could even maybe make it tall enough to where I could see what well, that have to be the sump, you know? So that 75 gallon could turn into a sump. I could move that 150 somewhere. But yeah, it just would be so much better. It'd be so much better. And then like, uh, you know, and then I'll have a couple of different windows. So yeah, that might be the plan. Eric says, do an L corner tank, a plywood build would be dope. One tank. Can't do one tank. That tank right there, this one is going to have to be salt. And then that one is going to be fresh. So I can't do two separate ones. It have to be, I mean, I can't do all one. It has to be two separate ones. Jim, do you have any breeding programs going with your collection to sell and offset your cost? Nope. Nope. Um, out of all of those hybrids that I raised out, I sold three. I sold three of them. All the other ones are still here. They then they done took some of each other out. You know, I got Mo, you know, Mo Champ, my boy Mo Champ. I'm gonna definitely slide him some. But uh, no, it's no, it's no offsetting any of this cost. This cost is just constantly coming out the pocket. You know what I'm saying? It's truly just my hobby. You know what I mean? Um, I don't, I don't breed fish or sell fish or anything like that. For me, it's not, I don't, I don't like breeding fish. You know, 
I got a whole 225 gallon aquarium right here that I'm trying to get rid of the fish. You know what I'm saying? So breeding fish is not something that I've ever tried to do. That happened by accident. You know, it was an amazing accident, but that's not something that I want to do. I like to just keep the fish that I like, you know, that I go to the fish store and I say, oh, I really like that fish. You know, the ones that really attracts my attention, the ones that I really always wanted to keep. It's more about just keeping those fish and doing it on a level to where I could show, show it off and we could experience that together. That's all. Uh, Jermaine, when you getting back into building the big boy tank? Jermaine, you, I think you just came in a room. We were just talking about that. Uh, I'm going to probably redo this whole idea altogether. You can give me your feedback. So instead of doing this quarter tank, Jermaine, what I'm thinking that I want to do is knock that down. Move the, move the 150 right here as well as the, um, the 75 gallon. Build a plywood tank that's going to go 11 feet to the corner. And then I could do another plywood for this um, one for this, um, from this for this saltwater tank, the 225, like I said I was going to do. So I could bring it over 11 foot. So I have an 11 foot of tank this way and 11 foot of tank going this way. And then, uh, you know. I think that I think that makes a lot more sense. Tell me if I'm wrong. Because the reason why I don't want to do this corner tank. The reason why I don't want to do the corner tank, though, is because it's just a crazy ass configuration. And I don't have anybody to use as a reference. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a reference to go to of saying, OK, you know, this is how this corner tank is built. Because everybody has a corner tank. Joey made a corner tank. Um, Barsky method made a, made a corner tank, you know, but nobody's corner tank is as big as the one that I was trying to build. You know what I'm saying? And I think I could get away with spending a little bit less on materials. If I wasn't stacking up two by six by eights, you know what I'm saying? If I wasn't having to go stack to support, you know, stack and lag bolts, you know what I'm saying? Like that's just a ridiculous amount that could go into literally building two more plywood builds. You know what I'm saying? Two more with the stands. So I'm thinking that that's what I want to do. I just got to figure out where I can move these two tanks to, you know, but there's no rush. I don't have any fish that needs to go in there right now. I literally just emptied out the 240 gallon aquarium and I don't have any fish that has to go in there. You know, I got the 29 gallon that's empty. I got the 40 gallon down there that's empty. I literally just threw one fish inside of the other 60 gallon down there. You know, didn't even have to do that. Um, then I have one fish down here. So I, it's like I got a lot of empty tanks. I don't have any reason to rush into building to building that that that, uh, that corner tank. And if I would have, then I would have thought about this later on and then I would have been stuck. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't rush into it. And I do have the option. I'm talking about before I fiberglass and before I use a pine shield. So I'm glad I got some options. And uh, now with these options, I'm think rethinking the whole thing. I, it'll look so much better because I wasn't going to have a plywood right there. It was just going to be this corner tank. But now having an 11 foot of corner of, um, of tank, that's going to be a big ass tank. Let me do some math real quick. I want to see how big that is. That probably will help all of us decide if that will make the most sense. I probably will make it about... Uh, that's probably like three foot wide. So let's see. So 11 foot. All right, we got 132 times 36 times 48 equals divided by two. So that's about that's about a thousand gallons going that way. And then this one right here is gonna be the same thing. 132 times 48 times 48 divided by 231 and that gives that makes my saltwater tank a little bit bigger so that will give me a 1300 gallon 1317 so that'll give me a 1300 gallon right here not counting the sump the sump is going to be another 125 gallons because i was going to use that 125 gallon saltwater tank and use that as a sump or i might actually build a sump down below Nonetheless, I'm gonna probably I might actually build that. That'll allow me to keep that 125. But so that'll give me a 1300 gallon saltwater tank over the 1000 gallon, 
That'll give me a nice 1,000 gallon over here for the fresh water as well. And uh, yeah, that'd be that'd definitely be good for some of these or for these some of these other large predator fish. You know, this is gonna this is gonna turn into at least a um, 3,000 gallon, 3,500 somewhere in there. And once it does, I'm hoping that I could get my albino silver in there as well as the Jardini. If I can't, then I could put the Jardini in a thousand gallon. I'm gonna try to make that a thousand instead of what it was. Um, let's see if I brought it. Yeah, it has to be three foot. Yeah, it'll come out to where that stand is, so it has to be three foot. But yeah, that's a, that's a pretty nice size tank for a Jardini, you know. And then if I ever feel like doing something in that space, I could do that. But you know. You know, it's still, wheels are still turning, you know, still trying to put it into perspective, trying to figure out what makes the most sense. Chris says, how are the Dovi festate out? They're in that 225 right there. Should cut the, I'll cut the light on for you so you can see them in the background. There you go. Ah, you can't see them. Just look like little ass fish. But yeah, you see them right there. Yeah, they good. Um, they need to go. They need to go. Make sure y'all hitting that like button. Make sure y'all hitting that like button for me one time. How you doing, Regina? You doing good? Have a good weekend. Mo, yes, that setup is on point. The two eleven foot plywood build. All right, Mo. Appreciate you. Appreciate the feedback. Thank you, my brother. Uh, we on point. That's what I was thinking. I think that just makes the most sense because it's better than having this one right here. I mean, you know, I did. Like I said, it was a, it's a nice footprint statement, all of that. But it will become a problem when I have to clean it. You know what I'm saying? They won't have as much. So it's like seven foot by six foot, right? It still wouldn't work. You know, it wouldn't really work for a Giardini. Like, the Giardini wouldn't be happy about that about that configuration. But it was, it was a nice thought. It's definitely a nice thought. Can't wait to have that space back. And I'm going to have a little bit more of this fish room back now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's time. And then I could get that done a lot faster. Get that done a lot faster. Watch how fast these bills come now. First thing first, I got to tear that damn thing down. Yeah. Yeah. Are you able to see the fish? You able to see the fish? You able to see the fish, Chris? You see those fry back there? Can't zoom in for you or anything, but yeah, they looking good. Like I said, I'm gonna take all of those fry out though. Those those fish gotta go. When they go, I'm putting African cichlids in that tank. Mike G, what's good with you? What's good with you, bro? And I'm doing cool. Doing cool, man. Just uh. Talking about what I had, what I've done for the weekend. Talking about the plans on this. Hmm. Talking about the plans on this plywood build. I think I solidified a new design, a new idea. So that's that's uh, that's pretty sick. But uh, yeah, everything's good. Everything's good. Your African sickles are awesome. Seems like you have a good amount of males. They're coloring up nice, crystal clear water. Please do your thing, cause. We're gonna be right through your journey, bro. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. You know, it's a trip when I, I still get people that's that think that it's cruel to keep African cichlids overstock. But y'all know, y'all know that you know that's the best way of reducing that aggression. You know what I'm saying? I have a bunch of African cichlids in there, and I also feed them a lot every day, and they still, man, they still take out. A tank made every every now and then. Like eat them, eat them. You know, 
So I definitely need to add some more. It's definitely not because of space. Just, you know, y'all know that's just how they be sometimes. Chris, good luck. Good look, good look. All right, peace. You know, all the way from Anchorage, Alaska. All right, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, Chris. Thank you for tapping in. Thank you for tapping in, y'all. But, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, yeah, so, you know. This room is forever changing. I was well, I was looking on the other side of this window. I was like, man, I could put like, I'm not going to do it. But if I was a real fool with it, if I was a real fool with it, I would have an inside, outside plywood. I would literally go through that window. So build into that wall, frame it out, go to the outside, extend it. That's why I just need a bigger space, man. Like, I... You know, this house is big. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for this house. But, you know, I would love to be able to do some different things. You know, when I moved in here, it was kind of like a rush, man. I didn't have no help. You know, I basically lost all of my fish because, you know, I had a couple hours before I had to get all of my tanks up out the spot. Uh you know, then loading them all in the truck. I didn't have any air stones for the for the for the for the, for the holding containers. Um, you know, out five in the morning, finally got the truck to the to the garage. I'm unloading all this shit by myself. You know, I lost everything. I lost all of my corals. I lost all of my saltwater fish, except for probably like, you know, I kept. I still have my two eels. Um, I had like four fish left. I had like four fish left. My freshwater lost. I, mean, I went from nine tanks to two tanks, put it like that. And the two tanks weren't stopped. Um, you know, and hella heavy ass tanks. The 225s were heavy, the 240s was hella heavy. You know, I'm having to lift them up and put them on a tank on the stands by myself. If I would have had to help or had the time, I would have configured everything in this room totally different. And, uh, you know, I just made do with the cars that I was dealt. But originally, when I first moved in here, but well, before I even moved in, I thought that I was going to build a big ass plywood tank against this wall and then a big one all the way against that wall. You know what I mean? I thought that was going to be the starting point for uh, for this for this room. Now it's like it works out, got hella tanks and shit, but I would definitely redo some things if I would start, if I had the the, the empty floor plan to start over. I would try to go as large as I could with the plywood. I don't know if y'all follow Aquarium Domain, but that that 4,500 that he got is nice. I probably would have went wider. If it was me, I think I would have went six foot and took it down 33 feet like he did. But, you know, nonetheless, you know, you always got to make do and work with the cards you were dealt. You know what I'm saying? You can't ever complain about the hand you've been dealt. You just play those damn cards. That's it. Make sure y'all liking the video. I know the um the, the chat fluctuates up and down with the people that's you know coming in and out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Regenerative life Wayne. If you ever purchase another property, it gets you a little land with it and build an outbuilding for your own fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the plan, man. That's the plan. I definitely want to get some land. I need me a, I need me an acre, man. I need me a nice acre or two of land. So um if I, we ever move, if we ever move, you know, we just, we've only been here two years. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shit. Damn, going on two years. Yep, going on two years. On, on, in April, it'll be two years. So we are just about to hit that two-year anniversary. Uh, but we will definitely be, uh, be looking to buy some land when we're able to. You know, a couple of acres of land. I mean, I would love to. I would love to just buy the land and just get the house built on the land. You know what I'm saying? So that way I can design it the way I want it because I know what I want. I know how I want it and things like that. I want, I want outside ponds. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that would be the idea. That would be that would be the, that would be the dream. You know what I mean? As many acres as I possibly could get. That would definitely be the dream. Yep, Colin, the fish building would be sick. 
you know, I, here it is. I turned the garage into the fish build. Make sure y'all hitting that like button. Two more people that came into the chat. Hit that like button for me one time. Uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely would. You know, this turned into the this turned into the fish building. Um, I don't. We don't really care about not being able to park the cars in here, or anything like that. But you know, actually being able to plan it out, design it the way that I want it designed, and then add the fish to it, that would be the best way of doing it. That would definitely be the way that we would want to do it. Way that I would want to do it, uh, you know, very large ponds, circular ponds. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just you know, maybe one day to come into fruition. Make sure y'all hitting that like button. Hit that like button. You need to sell that home in California for a huge profit and move south to Texas like all the rest of California. I'm not moving to Texas. Y'all got tornadoes, man. I love California. We got way better. We got way better weather than y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not moving up out of Cali. People try to move to Cali. I did when I retired from the Texas is much cheaper. Yeah, Texas is definitely much cheaper. It's a lot of places that's much cheaper, but I'm cool. I'm straight. I'd rather get what I'm talking about in the area out here. I love Cali weather. I love Cali weather. Let me understand my main hobby is automotive photography cars. Just picked up the second car. Definitely wish I had a nice pole barn one day. Yeah, nice pole barn one day. Yeah, man. That's what's up, Colin. That's what's up. You know, uh, shit, man. Exercising was my hobby at one point in time. Exercise was one of my hobbies. I still do it, but you know now it's just a way of life, just trying to keep up with it. But you know, hobbies are nice to have. I wish I would have. I wish I would have learned, like you know, learned about cars and all that. My dad died when I was very young, so you know I didn't have anybody to school me on how to do shit with cars. And I was going to go to school for cars, you know, automotive. But you know, at the time I was doing facility maintenance at this uh, semiconductor facility. So, you know, I wound up going for facility maintenance. And, uh, you know, over the course of that, I was already working as a facility maintenance manager. And then I just started my own business. You know, I started my own business back in 2017. And, uh, you know, stopped working at the job, you know, when it went under back in 2018. And then ever since, I've just been doing my own thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Did you say regenerative? Most of Texas don't have tornadoes. That's a myth. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got I got a cousin that live in um, I got a cousin that live in Texas in Fort Worth. I went to visit her one time, but y'all also get cold ass. Y'all get snow and all type of shit. It was snowing out there when I went. But yeah, yeah. Especially with all extra cash you would have, but you know you would forget about Cali. I hear you, bro. I hear you. Like I said, man. You know I, I love Cali weather, man. I'm cool. I'm good. What type of tank setup is needed for a seahorse? What type? What kind of tank setup is needed for a seahorse? Whatever size tank you want to have, whatever size tank you want to have, make sure you got something in there that the seahorses can hang on to. Uh, something vertical, you know, that they can hang on to. So you know, other than that, I think it's shit, man. Pretty much the same. You know, people have like the floating chains and shit, you know, the chains so they can hold on to it. So that's all you need is something, something vertical so your seahorse can hold on to. Stu Smoke. Yep, I remember you lost on your move. Yeah, that's the love of the hobby, bro. You are coming back bigger, better. You find new fish and you get your mind thinking, opening up. That stuff you didn't see before. Exactly. That's, a, that's right. That's right, Stu. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, and I appreciate you for uh, for sticking around all this time, man. You, you, for you to remember that you one of the OGs, man. You know, you one of the OGs I talk about, man, all the time. So I definitely appreciate that. A lot of people they don't even know what it took for me to get to this point. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody's mentioned, like, oh, I can't listen to your intro. My intro is literally the story behind, you know, the rebirth of this shit. You know what I'm saying? It it shows the progression from. You know how this room looked when I first moved in 
to each step that I took to get it to where it's at right now. So that that's the that's what the whole that's the whole purpose of the intro, just to catch people up to where I'm at right now. All right, for sure. I'm 21, and my dad always worked like 60 miles from where we live. He knows a lot about cars, but never had the time because he knows a ton about cars. We really don't get along though. So I'm currently learning by myself. Hey, Colin, I'm sorry to hear that, man. I'm sorry to hear that. That's that's that's, that's tough, man. That's tough. You know, my son, he's a uh, shit. My son to be 22. My, my oldest son, he's gonna be 22 in June. Uh, and we don't get along like that, you know. You know, he's uh he does he's doing his own thing right now. So, you know, if there's ever a way for you to kind of like you know mend that relationship, you definitely should. Definitely should. I'm currently going to college college for cybersecurity, but my dream was doing the photography thing full time. It's bring I'm planning on starting my own business. Good for you, Colin. Good for you, man. That's what's up, man. I'm pretty sure your dad's proud of you, even if you don't say it. I'm pretty sure he's proud of you, man. That's definitely a, that's an amazing thing. Yeah, man, cybersecurity, uh, we all need that. We all need that. And Jet, definitely, you know, you always want to have Uncle Sam, you know, make sure you're paying your taxes. You know what I'm saying? So if you go to school and you graduate and you do cybersecurity, that's cool. You know, the photography, let that be the side thing. You know what I'm saying? Let that be the business. But... You know, when you when you go and file your taxes, you're gonna really be able to eat because you done paid Uncle Sam all through the year from that job. You get what I'm saying? I learned from having my business for seven years. One thing I did learn is that it's always best to pay Uncle Sam through the job first. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's best to have a regular job and start the business. That's how people eat. When you don't have that regular job and you only have that business. You know, you got to pay. You always going to pay taxes at the end of the year. You never going to be able to get away with not paying taxes. You want, they want their 30%. So, you know, paying Uncle Sam through the year, you know, then here come the tax write-offs for that business. You're going to eat. You're going to eat every time. Uh, okay, Regina, and outside of Houston, it does not snow in southern Texas. That's north Texas. Texas is huge. You can have your huge pond, fish, outhouse, everything you want. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm going to try to make that happen in Cali, though, Regenerative. I'm going to try to make that happen in Cali. Kyle and Nick live after my girlfriend and I get a place we do want to get some tanks on. Yeah, Colin, you definitely should. You definitely should. But yeah. I'm glad that these videos help. I'm glad these videos help, man. Um... Uh, you know, my personal life, man, I don't even have a lot of people that's into the fish hobby personally. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, you know, they into other things, you know. So that's why I'm always have to do this by myself. <laughs> I always have to do this by myself. Because personally, I don't have a lot of people that's interested in this. So, you know, it's definitely good to be able to connect with y'all, you know, chat, chop it up, share ideas. You know bounce things off one another you know what i mean i appreciate that more than somebody else that actually have the outside you know um support of you know other fish keepers you know what i mean so i appreciate it that much more so i thank y'all i thank all of y'all and make sure y'all hitting that like button i've seen some more people coming to the chat hit that like button for me one time but yeah um it's important to have a support system you know aida is my biggest support system you know sometimes you know your partner might not you know, enjoy the hobby as much as you do. I got lucky. You know, my girl, she loves this hobby as much as I do. She might not work as much as I do on it, but she loves it as much, and that counts a lot. You know what I mean? She definitely makes things easier. And, uh, you know, she don't try to get at me when I go to the fish store. You know, she doesn't try to stop me. You know what I mean? She allows me to, you know, like she allows my, creati my creativity to shine. You know what I mean? Hell, I got, a, I got two fish rooms. You know what I mean? That she's supportive of both. So, um, yeah, it's important to try to find somebody that kind of supports your hobbies. Definitely want to find somebody that support. I couldn't imagine having a female that hated the hobby. I know some, I know maybe some of y'all got that. I, I feel for y'all, but I, I don't know. If I had that, I probably would end up single. 
Yep. All right, Mike G. Sam, I don't have anybody interested in tanks. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> yeah, man, it's a trip. It's a trip. You know, man, when I was, it was a time where I wasn't into tanks. You know, it was a time when I wasn't into tanks. Daniel, thank you. I appreciate that. Big shout out, Daniel. He, uh, he, he, he just gave, he just donated five bucks, man. I really appreciate that, man. That's, uh, that's awesome. That's amazing. Um, you know, um, I don't even know where I was going with that. I don't even know where I was going with that. He hit that, that threw me off in the right way. Threw me off in the right way. Oh, that's where I was going with it. So yeah, um, you know, it was a it was a period of time when I wasn't really into fish tanks. Um, I got back heavy in the tanks. Obviously, I say it all the time. Twelve years ago is when I started again, but I did fall off again. I did fall off again. You know, for a few years, um, I didn't have an aquarium. And I started back having aquariums again back in back in 20, 2017. So so seven years ago is when I and then consistently for the seven years, um, you know, I had tanks again. And the only reason why I fell off was because of my living situation. You know, I was kind of like, you know, I fell on hard times and I was bouncing around and shit, you know. So um, that was the reason why. You know, I didn't have any tanks. And then once I got stable again, you know, I got to get the tank again. You know what I mean? All right. Virginia, if I do miss San Diego, they had the best fish stores when when I lived there. Yeah. Yeah. When I, if I go to, when I go to San Diego, I want to go to San Diego Zoo. And I definitely want to check out some of their fish stores out there. San Diego has some of the best weather. Colin, definitely living the fish life through your videos. Yes, sir. I was living a fish life. Hey, I used to live so vicariously through, you know, through the Florida fish guys. So vicariously, you know, when I was living in an apartment, you know, that's why. That's why when I got the house, I already knew what I wanted to do. You know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I got the idea. Honestly, I got the idea from the pool pond, you know, from other fish keepers, other YouTubers, you know. Uh, but I just wanted to take it up a notch and do it the way I did it. Uh, I just put my just put my homie on now. He has three tanks. Gave him some fish. Also, yeah, Mo. Yeah, yeah, Mo. That's what it's about. That's what it's about, man. If you can recruit, I did. I recruited one of my partners. I got one partner that's that's that has a fish tank, but he's not true to this. He's not true to the hobby, man. Um. You know, first things first, we used to go get, we used to go, you know, go fish shopping there and all that, you know, and, um, you know, all of this fish fought, killed each other until he was down to his last. Now all he got in there is a Raphael catfish, right? Raphael catfish, you know, and, uh, you know, I started him off with a, with a, with a 75 gallon tank and then he upgraded to a 125 gallon tank. So he got, he got some options, but you know, he hasn't done anything with it. You know, he hasn't done anything with it. Let me see if I can like that. Bam. There we go. Yeah, man. Um. Oh. <laughs> Bo, you say yo, you say yo, yo, your partner hates the hates the fish hobby. Oh, Bo. You gotta find a way to get her involved in it. Man, let her set up a tank. Let her set up a tank. You know, let her know that there's some beautiful fish out there. Damn. Colin, I was on the, I was in the doghouse for a little getting the second car. <laughs> she supported what I didn't communicate enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, even the car thing, you know, it's kind of hard to find a female that really is in the cars like, you know, like, you know, a man is. And then sometimes when you do find the one that is in the cars, then, you know, she, you know, she, uh, whatever, you know, <laughs> sometimes she might like the girls, you know, so. Uh, or be be extra time boyish, you know. And I like I like feminine women, you know what I mean. I definitely like my women feminine, wear heels, makeup, all that, all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah. Facts, pick, pick the night, pick the right girl, and fifty four single, and into DIY solar aquaponics, exotic animals, prepping. 
living off grid, retired early. The right lady is important for me. I don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> Regina, Regina, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I feel you. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you, man. Yeah, this is definitely important to pick the right girl. It's definitely important to pick the right partner. And, uh, you know, I've never been married, and I do want to get married one day, but I only want to do it once. I don't believe in getting married more than one time, you know? So you got to pick the right one. Mike G, 2002, got a got a 55-gallon with a few piranha hat, have had tanks ever since. Yeah, you are. You OG in a hobby 22 years, man, 22 years. Man, I wish we could have piranhas in Cali. I wish we could have piranhas in Cali. It's not allowed. It's illegal here. But if I could, I would definitely have some piranha. In a park, I got heavily into fish keeping when I was stationed in San Diego. Okay, okay. Yeah, regenerative. My my brother regenerative was in was in San Diego too. Yeah, yeah. I gotta go. I gotta go down to San Diego. San Diego again. The last time I was out there, I was doing some work. Oh, uh, you try? She's a dog lover. <laughs> what kind of dogs is she like? You got dogs too? I didn't know you had dogs. Uh, okay. Stu Smoke. It's been real too, man. It's so you got to hit the bed. It's after 12 and ATL. Much love. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Stu. Appreciate you, Stu. Shout out to the ATL, man. Shout out to the ATL, man. I appreciate you for tuning in, contributing. All that, man. I will catch you in the next one, man. That's a fact. Have a good night, and I let everybody know that you that you send your wishes. Colin definitely wants to go somewhere with nice weather. I'm in Michigan. Yeah, it's it's ugly in Michigan, huh? It gets it gets cold out there. Yeah, man. Cali, man. Cali weather is nice. Cali weather is nice, man. We had a beautiful day today. Yeah, yeah, their mission laws definitely wouldn't be the best. And I love Piranha and a Navy vet to shit, mate. Okay, yeah, man, Piranhas are nice, man. Wolf, um, snakeheads too. Snakeheads too, man. Like we can't get none of the good stuff in Cali. We can't get none of the good stuff in Cali. I swear. Overall, man, America, we can't. You know, Asian marijuana. I'm always preaching that, man. Asian marijuana should definitely be legal. It don't make any sense for it to still be illegal. Why? You know, in these other countries, they breed these for food. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, man, I just want one as a pet, and they eat them. Like, geez, and Grand Rapids. Okay, Mark, what's good? What's good? No, nah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that, Mike. You can, you can refer to her as my wife. It's all good. She ain't going nowhere. Yeah, man. Yeah, we appreciate your support as always. But yeah, she ain't going nowhere. I don't plan on I don't plan on leaving the family. Dango, you Dango, you say you in South South of Texas now? No quality fish out here, and they're expensive. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Daniel. You heard that, Virginia? <laughs> He said ain't no quality fish out there and they're expensive. That's what I'm talking about. Man, come back to Cali, regenerative. Come back to Cali. Now, I know you're probably loving it out there because of the land, though. And, Mo, you said two cocker spaniels and a golden doodle. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So she's not in. So she's not into, like, the, you know, I don't know if they're big out there, but out here, you know, the Frenchies are big. The Frenchies and the Bullies. Is that big out there? Where you at? Name a part. What was your rate when I was in Salem, Architect? Hell yeah, I was born in South Haven, but currently live in South Flint. South of Flint. Man, is the water bad where you at, Colin? Since you said you're South of Flint? Oh, I hope that's not a... Yeah, all the above. Okay, okay, Mo. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, they be out here, man. They be out here pulling up on people for the Frenchies, man. It's a trip. 
it's 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 bad out here for the Frenchies. They they robbing, they they doing their thing for the Frenchies. I hope it ain't that bad out there too, though. Okay, Colin, the water's good over there. That's what's up. That's what's up. Virginia, some full of Florida will get snake heads and release them along with products. That's what's driving. It's more to get some good stuff and bring it back home. <laughs> Man, but I can't show it off. You know what I'm saying? And then you're going to have fish and wildlife at your door hitting for a $25,000 fine. Man, people are going to jail for something. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Yeah, but you're right. I'm not doing that, though. I'm cool. If the fish is not legal, I'm not having it. You know, when they were talking about getting rid of all those fish, you know, on that list, I didn't care. Notice why I didn't care is because if they going to pass a law saying that certain fish got to go, well, shit, they got to go. There's still plenty of other fish that I can't keep because I'm never going to keep a fish that's going to end up being a high fine or put me in jail. I'm not keeping any fish like that. Mo, we don't have no fish stores unless you say PetSmart or Petco. Damn. Ooh, that's ugly. That's ugly, Mo. Damn. Mark, definitely lock, lock it down, brother. Married life isn't so bad. I had to get rid of my tanks once I got married. It's a 28 years old head over here. How's the shark, by the way? Nah, Mark, you can't, man, you got to get your tanks back, man. Man, y'all know it's happy, happy wife, happy life, but you got to get the tank back, at least one tank, she got to compromise. But yeah, I'm not afraid of marriage, I'm not afraid of marriage at all. It's just like I said, I want to do it one time. You know what I mean? Got to do it once, got to do it once. And uh, the shark is good. The shark is solid. You know, I got an eating tonight before I started this live. I re took everybody out to 240. I fed all the fish. I fed the shark. The shark, he likes to eat shrimp. That's where I was messing up at because the owner of the pet store told me, before I even bought him, he told me that he was feeding them silver size. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. Silver size it is. You know, and then come to find out that he's not eating the silver size, but he likes eating shrimp. He's fat right now. He's looking good. The next live, I'm gonna have a couch facing. I'm gonna have a couch, you know, right in front of the 225, and then I'm gonna have a camera facing it, so it'll be easy to show y'all. You know, I can show y'all the shark. You know, I can show y'all Lisa Ray, or whatever the case may be. So we are gonna try to switch it up. We gonna try to switch this thing up. Cody, what's good with you? What's good with you? Now I went to Petco. I saw this black and white clown really want to get him. Yeah, man. Yeah. I started off when I when I first got my salt water tank, when I started off, that's the first 20 gallon salt water tank that I ever had. Now it's first, that's the first 20 gallon tank that I had for the salt. I started off with the um with the black and white clown fish. Kind of like I still live with my parents, and I currently have a guinea pig. I also had a hamster and a 40 gallon breeder, but he passed away last summer because he was old. Sorry to hear that, Colin. I'm sorry to hear that. I had hamsters growing up as well. I never had the guinea pigs. They were a little too big and a little too pricey. But I had the hamsters as well coming up. Mo, you order most of yours? Okay. Okay. Do you order? Have you ordered? Have you ever ordered anything from uh, from Imperial Tropicals? They definitely solid. They are solid. They are solid, uh, reputable online fish store. And they got it, and they have a YouTube, and they have a YouTube. Daniel Park, no state Texas out here. I was born and raised in SoCal, but I ain't in no hurry to get back. Damn, no state Texas out there in Texas. That's that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Yeah, all I know is Cali, man. All I know is Cali, oh, man. I've only traveled out of Cali one time, and that was to go to Fort Worth, Texas, and that was that was 25 years ago. That was 25 years ago. Uh, 
Mo, but you can have whatever. Y'all can have, you have a snakehead out there? You got to get you a snakehead, Mo. Oh, you got to get you a snakehead, Mo. I want to live vicariously through you. I want to live vicariously through you, man. If you can get a snakehead, man. You know? Kind of after those animals, my parents are like, nothing until I move out. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, man, I had a um I had like six animals when I was like from like the age of 10 to 12, I had like six different types of animals. I had um I had hamsters, I had bitches, I had an iguana, I had a rabbit, I had fish. The dog don't count, that was my mom dog. And I had to take care of all of them. I had to take care of all of them. And I did, and I did, you know, I had my little mini zoo. You know what I'm saying? I definitely was going through issues with the fish. You know, didn't really know much about them. You know what I'm saying? Whenever I do my water changes, I would take out all the water. You know, put back in cold water. Didn't know the process. My mom didn't come rescue. Didn't come say, "Hey, this is how you do it." You know, and I and I appreciate moms for allowing me to learn on my own. You know what I'm saying? Like I definitely learned at a young age how to cure it. Uh, you know. I didn't really get all sad when a fish would die or anything like that. So, you know, she definitely she definitely allowed me to learn, and that's what I respect most. Man, I ain't getting rid, I ain't getting rid of nothing when I date ladies. They make one negative comment about my hobbies. <laughs> they out of here <laughs> to the next. I don't care how they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, man, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Like I said, you know, look, I got lucky, but Eric, but before before I ate it, I still had aquariums, and every and every, you know, the females that I talked to, they definitely still enjoyed the aquariums, even though they weren't fully into it. But like you just said, if you're not into the hobby, I'm not. You know, peace. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't respect it, peace. You know, that's with anything. You know what I'm saying? Like I, at this point, we got to be on the same frequency in life. You know, we got to both want to aspire to be our best. You know what I'm saying? We damn near got to like some of the same things. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the one thing that I know that you know that I'm always different from, you know, is the shows. You know what I'm saying? Like the females that I date, they definitely like their own shows. I even like watching her types of stuff. I watch something completely different right now. <sighs> Sorry about that, y'all. Right now, I'm finishing up watching Walking Dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember I started watching Walking Dead the first the first season, and then I just forgot about it, and then I just was seeing season after season after season, and then I tried to catch it one time, and I was like, I don't even know what the hell's going on. But I just, at the point, I'm almost at the end of season 11. I think I'm on, like, episode nine of season 11 so it's done after this but i enjoyed this a whole lot more because i've been able to binge watch walking dead you know pretty damn good pretty damn good and she don't like it no matter of fact she does like it she does like it let me correct she does she didn't like it in the beginning but she does like it she do like it still don't like her shows though Mo said, Stephen Bates, what happened to the plywood aquarium? I done answered that so many times, Stephen. I done asked that question so many times. Uh, we, 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 we came to the conclusion that we're going to just come up with a whole different design and idea for this right here. So this plywood aquarium is going to come out, and I'm going to do a plywood right here, 11 foot. Fresh water, 11 foot salt water, and then that's the new plan. That's the new plan. Virginia, I've been all over the country, wouldn't live anywhere but Texas right now. Man, Texas must really be solid, man. Texas must really be solid. But yeah, um, man, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a different person than I was. You know, some years ago, uh, you know, losing my parents at a young age. And, uh, you know, it kind of does something to you. You know what I'm saying? I lost my mom at 15. 
And uh, you know, you know, I guess I could tell y'all the story. Shit, man, it's uh, sometimes it'd be hard to talk about. So, you know, I lost my mom at 15, I lost my dad at five, and you know, shit, after I lost my mom, I didn't even want to, I didn't care about nothing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't care about anything, I didn't even think I was gonna literally be 21, you know what I'm saying? I basically carried myself in a way to where, you know, if I live another year, uh, that's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? That's lucky, you know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, I dropped out of high school, I, you know, and Went to the streets, you know, went to the streets. Uh, you know, the streets are always quick to embrace, you know, a young mind, you know, that's that's looking for something. You know what I'm saying? You're looking for something. You know, that's why a lot of kids, that go to the streets. And going to the streets at a young age, you know, that, that, that put me into situations where I ended up incarcerated, you know. And, you know, I was incarcerated a number of times. You know, over the span of eight years, you know, I was either getting out of jail or going back to jail. You know what I'm saying? I've been to, you know, five different prisons. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, uh, I stopped going to jail and being incarcerated in 2010, right? So in 2010, I moved out of my natural environment, which was Oakland, you know, I'm from Oakland, California. I moved out of Oakland. I moved to San Jose with the person that my my girlfriend, and you know that 50, 50 minutes away from each other. You know what I'm saying? So me being that far away, you know, it's probably like shit. It's not even really far than that. Maybe like an hour, maybe an hour away, but an hour hour away from each other, and that distance allowed me to basically start over. You know what I'm saying? So I started over. Uh, got on with a temp agency or whatever the case may be. And I basically started adding value on myself. Prior to that, I had jobs. You know what I'm saying? I have, I got my first job, you know, two days before my 18th birthday. And, uh, you know, so I had jobs, but it was, I wasn't making the money that I wanted to make. I didn't have anything really to offer except for that I was strong and I was a hard worker. You know what I mean? I got my GD in prison. Um, so, uh, I started working at a tip agency and then I got on with the company I was with for seven and a half years, you know, as a semiconductor facility, you know, and I worked through them for two and a half for, for 27 months, you know, I was only getting paid $10 an hour. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I finally got moved, got put on permanent. And then like four years later, I had got enough knowledge. By the, during this time in 2011, I went to wild tech, which is a trade school. I went to, I got my diploma for plumbing. Um, I also started going to a community college, you know, for uh, originally for, for auto mechanic, then facility maintenance. Um, and I was learning, you know what I mean? I was adding things onto myself. You know, I went and got my painting license. You know, I have my painting contractor's license. I went and got my, um, my, um, my home inspector certificate. You know what I mean? So I can do home inspections. Um, and then I also started my business that I have now. Matter of fact, I had started a couple different businesses. I started my painting business. I started the business that I'm still doing right now. I started my home inspector business, and then I started a nonprofit. So all of this, all of this is happening from 2010 up. You know what I'm saying? So really, you know, my life really started from 2010 because part of that, from the age 19 up, I was just you know, like I said, I was either getting out of jail or going back to jail. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. So then here I am, you know, shit, seven years in, having my business, um, you know, got my first home, um, you know. So, you know, shit, you know, you can turn your life around any moment. You know what I mean? I, I'm pretty sure everybody that's in the comments, you know, um, probably don't, don't have a story like mine. But, uh, yeah, I don't always like to share the story because, you know, being, you know, on, 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 on being on live and talking to people and just putting your life out there, putting your life story out there to people, you know, you, you get different reactions. You get people that's like, ah, oh, you know what I mean? Like it's just so, sometimes it's hard to open up with that kind of raw content, that kind of raw information. You know what I'm saying? But uh, one thing I did learn is that you could turn your life around at any given time. You know what I mean? It's really in you. And one thing I do realize that, I just can't believe that it took so long for me to get together. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't know how I spent eight years trying to get, you know, trying to get it right. But now that I have it right, I'm not about to do anything to risk anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to get it wrong again. So, like I said, you know, I'm a total different person than what I was, you know, shit. Now, for going on 14 years, I've been home 14 years. You know, it's amazing. But, you know, 15 years ago, 16 years ago, I wouldn't even be in front of the camera. You know what I mean? I didn't have no tanks. You know what I'm saying? I was, you know, I was in the, I was in the mix. You know, I was doing, you know, the wrong thing. You know what I mean? I put money first above everything else. And I learned that that's definitely not the way you do it. You got to put your freedom first. You put relationships first. But mainly for me, I had to put my freedom first. So I don't do anything that's going to make me lose my freedom. So after that, you know, family, all that good stuff. But if you're not free, can't do nothing for your family. But yeah, so son, so y'all in the chat, y'all 24 people, man. You know, y'all got the real, y'all got the scoop. You know, quick little life story. Make sure y'all hitting that like button. You know, 24 people. I know all y'all ain't hit it. But yeah, so that's where we at. And thank you, Colin. I appreciate that. I definitely appreciate that. Thank you for the positive feedback. Hey, bro, I fuck with this live stream. Do you this way, chill now. I mean, chill before, but this is the big, bro. Thank you, Cody. I appreciate that. Thank you, Antoine. Tim, I appreciate that. The general look, fellas, take it from an older 54 year old man. It's good to have great positive hobbies to keep you out of the bars and streets. I don't care what hobbies it is, as long as it's positive facts. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I'm trying to get my son, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get my son to, you know, um, make better decisions. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, I already mentioned that he's about to be 22, you know, and, uh, you know, he's, you know, re you know, regretfully kind of like falling after my, my footsteps in a way, you know what I'm saying? And I've definitely have led by example, you know what I mean? I've shown him the way he's worked with me on jobs. I've, I told him how he could start his own business. I gave him the blueprint. You know, I gave him the blueprint. I gave him the blueprint of what not to do. And I gave him the blueprint of what to do. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's just a trip how he still want to follow his own blueprint. Like as if he's going to rewrite it. Like you can't rewrite it. You know what I'm saying? It's a right way of doing things and a wrong way of doing things. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do it my way. There's many ways of doing it. But don't do it the way that cause me to be taken from you you know what i'm saying it's a trip man these kids man these kids i don't know what it is i don't know what it is but coming up you know in any kind of hood or anything like that it is so hard to get these kids to listen and you know make better decisions you know they always think that they can reinvent the wheel you know what i'm saying like i just you know it's beyond me it's definitely beyond me all right, Colin, losses are tough. I'm super close to my grandparents and my uncle. In September 2020, I lost my grandpa and family. In February of 2021, I lost my uncle. Unfortunately, I saw my uncle's body when I was still, when it was still warm and was okay in the moment. But days later, I had bad nightmares, PTSD. Sorry to hear that, Colin. I'm sorry to hear that. You know, watching a loved one pass is definitely hard, you know. It's definitely hard. Um, you know, I, I watched my mom, you know, I watched my mom die in front of me. Uh, you know, she had a brain aneurysm, you know, and if you don't know nothing about a brain aneurysm, it's when a, a vein a vein busts in your head and uh, it takes up the space. You know what I'm saying? So um, my mom went from, buy, she was going to leave and go buy me a, a leash for my iguana. And uh, 20 minutes later, you know, she's on the ground, you know, vomiting, you know, uh, defecating on herself. It happened fast, man. It happened fast. And uh, she lost consciousness. And that was it. Never regained it. You know, brain dead, you know. So for years, for years, you know, it would just haunt me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even want to, I didn't want to be here no more. Like I said, like, I didn't care about nothing. You know what I mean? I didn't want to be here anymore. Um but, you know, over time, you know, I had my son when I was 19. 
So um, over time, you know, I found things that was worth living for. You know what I mean? I did begin to care again. And um, that was the best thing I could have done. But, yeah, it's hard losing somebody. It's hard losing somebody. You know, my dad died of lung cancer, you know. So, you know, and that that watching him get ate up, you know, from lung cancer, you know, always in hospice at home in, in bed. The nurse would come to the house. It's It's hard. It's rough. You know, you got to appreciate life. You never know when it's going to be taken from you. You know, value and appreciate your loved ones because you never know when they're going to be gone. But yeah, and try to make sure you live your life with as least with with at least no regrets. You know what I'm saying? Or the least amount of regrets as possible. You know, if there's something that you want to do, do it. You know. Uh, let's see. Well, we're in the same boat. I got out in 2011, five years, my brother. I feel you can't speak on your loss, but the rest, yes. Yeah, Mo, I knew we connected for some reason, man, on multiple levels, man. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad that I'm done with that life. So glad that I'm done with that life. Collins Hobbies definitely save lives. Pax Oakland, town business, man. You already know, man. Town biz, man. Town biz. Uh uh, any updates on the new Pine Bill? No, Lake Hawk. No updates on the new Pine Bill. Which Pine Bill are you talking about? You thought I really appreciate you, brother. Helen, you from Jamaica. Thank you. I appreciate you. You thought. Shout out to Jamaica. Man, Jamaica, man. How's it, man? How's it out there right now, man? Turn it up, man. How's it out there, man? Jamaica, man. That's that's what's up, man. We, we reach it. We reach it, man. Yeah, man. Scale, thank you for your tapping in and sharing the sharing the, sharing that with us. It's all good, scale scholar. It's all good. It's all good. Didn't even expect to. Didn't even expect to, man. But you know what? Sometimes it's good to talk about things. Sometimes uh, you know, we need to vent. You know what I mean? If we don't vent, you know, we we explode, implode. You know what I mean? So I appreciate the positive comments. I appreciate y'all for listening. And you know, we 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 still talking about fish, but you know. You know, this real and raw. So, appreciate it. Cody, our tiger shovel nose passed away. Oh, Cody. Ah. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Damn. Damn. Was it the swim bladder? Damn. Ah. Colin just wanted to say. I'd be happy to have a dad like you, man. My old man is a terrible teacher and always just say smart aleck things, piss people down. I appreciate you saying that, Colin. I really appreciate you saying that. That's, uh, you know, that's really thoughtful. And sorry that you, I'm sorry that your dad is like that. I'm sorry that he doesn't recognize the things that you do. And, you know, I'm sorry that he feels like having a smart ass re remark or response or 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 comment it's a way that he has to be or has to parent you know i've always tried to keep it you know as real with my kid as possible you know i don't need to don't need to sugarcoat things and i always want the best one you know what i'm saying so i'm sorry that it's like that i hope i really hope that one day he changes before it's too late i don't understand why a parent would be like that to their kid you know especially when they're handling their damn business you know, it's beyond me, beyond me. All right, Antoine, hey, brother, I was just like your son. I had good examples and all that, and I chose the streets. I didn't have have to be there, but you know what God turned it around for me around 25, and I'm 33 now. Man, I hope that happens, man. I hope that happens. Um, he has three more years. You know, they say that your frontal – the frontal cortex finished finish developing at 25. So maybe that was it. I mean, I had, you know, you know, I was a knucklehead too, man. I was a knucklehead too, man. I, I was a knucklehead until, until 26, 27. I was a knucklehead until 27. Um, you know, but I felt like I didn't have any, I felt like I didn't have a choice. You know, that's, a, that's, that's really the difference. But like you said, you know, you know, as a kid, you know, you have, you have all the best examples and you still want to do things, you know, your own way. 
So I hope that happens for him. I hope it happens, you know, before anything bad happens to him. You know what I mean? A little, a little bump in the road isn't that bad. But, you know, these days are so different. You know what I mean? When I came up, um, you know, it was a lot more fights. It was a lot more, you know, jumpings and, you know, stabbings. And, you know, you might get shot, might get shot. You know what I'm saying? I pretty probably shouldn't say that. But you might have a situation like that. You know what I mean? Now it's like totally different. You know what I mean? These kids are just ruthless. You know, they're ruthless, man. The streets is the streets don't have no love. You know what I mean? Don't have no love. Didn't have no love when I was coming up, but it's really no love now. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, you got to be more cautious, got to move smart. You know what I mean? Just keep your keep your day busy. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to be, just got to have something to do. You know what I mean? When you don't have anything to do, anything can happen. But when you have somewhere to be, have something to do, is totally different. You know, you don't find yourself involved in a, lot, in a lot of craziness. So I really hope that, you know, it turns around for him. You know, I'm always there. I'm always there. You know, and the thing is, man, like, it's, it's so crazy because, you know, I got my own business right now and I need the help. You know what I'm saying? Like, he needs the money. I need the help. Like, we could, you know what I'm saying? I always thought when I started this business that at some point, he would take the reins and he'd be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like he would be the person going out doing all these jobs and I'd be sitting back just, you know, delegating, you know, being the boss. You get what I'm saying? And I thought that he would be putting on his young friends, you know what I'm saying? Helping them get out of the streets and have better choices and options in life. Meanwhile, I'm still doing all the damn work. I'm behind the scenes. I do the quotes. I do the, uh, I do the, I do the quotes. I do the invoices. I do the sidewalks, I do the jobs, I do everything. Every point of the job I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? And at this point, I shouldn't be. You know, I shouldn't be. You know, I guess I gotta wait for Carter to get old enough to start doing this. You know what I mean? Carter's gonna be on point. He's gonna be on point. But damn though, by the time he's old enough, in another 12 years, I'll be 52. I guess I'll be working, busting my ass until I'm 52 then. But he's on. He's he's going. Yeah, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. Mainly because I feel like since I'm in the house with him, you know what I mean. When you don't grow up in the same household as your kid, it's a lot harder. It's a hot. It's a lot harder to, you know, get them to understand the sacrifices that you make. You know what I mean. It's a lot harder. So it is what it is. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about some fish right now, though. All right, you thought I want to install a 250 gallon aquarium, but I want some really nice coral ideas. Okay, okay, you want a 260? That's a that's a big tank. That's a big tank. You just gotta make sure you got the right lighting. You're gonna need all the bells and whistles. You're gonna need the refugium long term. You're gonna need you a good skimmer on that. Uh, you're gonna definitely want to start off with man 260. You could have anemones. You can have, uh, you can have the egg cans. You can have a zoe. You can have all of that. You know, you got options. There's no limits. There's no limits for four two sixty. All right, Tim, man, enjoying the new reef tank videos. Been subscribed, watch you since you was in the apartment. Burning wood, look, <laughs> Tim, man. Hey, you already, yeah, already know you, OG. I already know you, OG, Tim. For sure, for sure. The grind has been, the grind has been long and hard, man. The grind has been long and hard, but, you know, to convert this room to what it is and have a second fish room in a matter of two years, I see the horn shark. Man, I wish I could turn it around so you could see him. He's fat right now, too. Chunky. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. You know, to come to this, to be at this point after two years, after losing all of the fish that I did lose, it's humbling. It's humbling. That's a fact. Uh, Regina, they have lost respect for elders. They have lost respect for elders, but they have all these outside negative forces now to, to the rap culture, the gun culture, the street. 
it's real out here. They don't reckon they don't realize it until they fall. I agree, regenerative. I agree. I agree. You don't know until you know. You know, I didn't know until I knew. You know, now that I now that I know, I definitely try my best to try to, you know, preach and encourage, show and guide. But you know, um, you know, the, the the streets talk louder, the music talk louder, you know, you know. I, man they follow after these rappers that don't even live the life that they be rapping you know what i'm saying and i love rap music i listen to some of the same music but at least i know know it for what it is you know what i mean at least i know it for what it is went through that in 2022 my mom died in stage four lung cancer watching it deteriorate was the hardest my condolences tim my condolences, brother. Yeah, it's it's no joke. It's no joke, man. Um, cancer is such, such a nasty thing, man. It's such a nasty thing. Lake Hawk, the big one in the corner. Lake Hawk, if you're still if you're still around, I'm disassembling this corner, disassembling that corner tank. We're gonna switch it up. We going eleven foot fresh. Right here, I'm going to remove this 150 and the 75 gallon. We're going 11 foot fresh. We're going 11 foot salt. And we're going to take this out of here. This is, I'm about to use this wood for something else. That's the new plan. That's going to give me 1300 for that salt water. That's going to give me a roughly about 1,000 gallons for the fresh right here. And then uh, it's going to open up more floor space. I'm not going to be climbing in any aquariums or anything like that, but that's the new plan. That's going to be so much better, so much better. Four foot, three foot stands. Uh, damn, yeah. Three foot stands, three foot stands, four foot aquariums, nice, nice size window. That's the new plan. That's going to be so much better. It's going to be so much better. More, it's going to be more convenient, more convenient for me, you know? Mo, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for tapping in. Thank you for joining in on the conversation, man. Thank you for contributing. You already know, man. We locked in, man. You have a great night. I'm going to catch you in the next one, though. And, yeah, we're going to make it happen about those hybrids. <laughs> we gonna, we on for the hybrid. Okay. Cody, I'm not sure if he was just sitting in the bottom of the tank, breathing heavy, and even and every so often he was spent. Yeah, I don't know what happened to him, Cody. I was going to do an autopsy, but I just said screw it. Yeah, unless you unless you like a veterinarian, you might not have known what you was going to see anyway. You might not be able to just, you know, determine what you know what killed him. You know what he died from just based on the autopsy. You know, cutting him open. I wouldn't have done that either. So I'm glad you didn't do that. My cousin, Colin says, my cousin is on the same is the same age as me, and he's doing the same thing, choosing the street. It's mainly because his parents are bad influences. Yeah, 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 Colin. Yeah, you know, some you know we're a product of our environment a lot of the time. You know, um, it's where we it's, it's you know it's it's hard for us not to be. You know, if that's what you're, if that's what's all around you. You know, you don't want to be like an outcast. So, you know, that's, it's hard. It's hard. So you got to be a real strong-minded person to walk outside and see what you see and still and look the other way, put the blinders on. You know what I mean? It definitely takes a strong individual to do something like that. Pax Open was good with us. That's why I was also starting to change, start changing my life at 27. Was in and out of jail from 18 to 27. I'm 30 now, and I truly feel your know, fish played a part in saving my life. That's right, Pax. That's right, bro. You already know how hard the town is, man. You know, the town is insane, man. Like, it's like even if you want to do right, it's hard to do right just because somebody else is going to be on something. You know, but that's why I say you just got to keep yourself busy. Like, 
if you're going to school or working on, you know, make it, you know, adding value to yourself and you're working and you're doing your hobbies, you don't have time to do a lot of other stuff. You know, fish is definitely one of those things that, you know, will keep people out of trouble. You know what I'm saying? Out of the way. Uh, my son was slightly into fish. He's into plants, you know, but he don't even want to, he don't even want to do anything with the plants because of how other people look at it. You know, he don't want to be the plant guy. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm saying guy because it wasn't the guy. It was the, you know, you know, he don't want to be the N word. You know what I'm saying? I, wanna, I don't know how many more things is going to prevent me from being monetized. I done said a whole lot that's probably going to, you know, make it to where this thing can't get monetized. But the conversation needs to, need to stand. So, um, you know, he don't want to, he, he's basically not going to be himself based off of what somebody else, like, you got to be strong enough to be yourself around anyone. You know what I'm saying? Like, and this hobby is, a, is an amazing hobby. If I was in the plants, I'd do plants too. You know what I mean? I, I never thought that I was going to go my creativity or who I was based off of what, you know, peers like or don't like. You know what I mean? I never I never thought to be that way. When I was in the streets, it was that's the reason why I didn't have fish tanks. Like where was I gonna put a fish tank at? I was I was doing it moving. You know what I mean? So it, it, I didn't have time to sit there and worry about fish. But in this day and age, you could monetize anything. If you like fish, you can monetize, right? If you like plants, you can monetize it. If you like cars, you can monetize it. If you like cutting grass, you can monetize it. If you like cutting hair, you can monetize it. I mean, it's just so many people that's becoming millionaires or being financially stable or finding financial freedom from monetizing their joys, their passions, their hobbies. Like, it's way different right now. It's way different right now. So why not monetize the things that you're interested in? You know what I mean? I just don't understand. And in 2024, why not monetize whatever you're interested in? It could be crazy. It could be anything, anything. Just find a way to monetize it. You never know what kind of life it'll take you to, you know? All right, where we at? I left some shit. Easy is probably the biggest one I've ever up for my brother. I went to get my son at landscaping business to pass a trade on him. Yeah. I hope that he I hope that he gravitates towards that. Easy, I hope that he gravitates towards that landscaping business. Yeah. I really hope that he gravitates towards it. I thought my son was gonna gravitate towards mine. And Russell, you put a ton of work into your picture room. It's pretty good, impressive. Can't wait to see those five deals. Thank you, Tim. I can't. I can't wait till they're done. <laughs> I can't wait until they're done, man. I can't wait, man. If it wasn't for, man, if it wasn't about, if, if it wasn't for the financial aspect, this would be done. You know what I'm saying? Like it would have been done already. I mean, I would have done it myself if I was able to pay somebody to do it. I would do that too, but. You know, it's a, uh, as you know, like this is an expensive hobby. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's an expensive hobby. It's a wonderful hobby, but it's expensive. From the, from the electricity, you know, to the buying the fish, to everything, everything, you know, mainly buying the fish for me. Carly, swim in your friends or piles are here for your skin. <laughs> swimming in the ponds and the pools is good yeah that's right that's right i'm not gonna have one that i can swim in i might be able to climb in this one when this is done it's three thousand gallon but yeah that's the only one i can't wait this is the one that i really want want to have done i cannot wait to see kobe i didn't tell y'all so um uh, i'm not doing viewing panels on this one i'm not going to do viewing panels on this one i'm gonna go up about I'm going to go up about four foot. Do some math. Let's see how let's see how many gallons this one is actually going to be. So we looking at, let me see, we looking at, 
Mm-hmm. Oh, we gonna do another ten foot. Then they want to do more than ten foot. We gonna do ten foot by forty eight by I think that's like seven. Bigger than that, so if I went 10 foot by seven foot by four foot, that's only going to be 2,000 gallons. I mean, that's a big that's a big one, that's only 2,000 gallons. Uh, so the reason why I don't want to put viewing panels was because the one thing I like about this pond is that the fish occupy all areas of the pond, like they don't. You know, when you got a viewing panel, like right now, the fish are right here in the front. Like, they don't occupy every section of it because sometimes they don't want to be looked at. Sometimes they feel more comfortable, you know, knowing that when you walk in, you're going to feed them. But in here, like every section, every section of the pond, they occupy. So, but if I go five foot, damn, I didn't want to go five foot. I go five foot, I don't want 20. Times 84. That's 2,600 gallons. So it's only 600 more gallons if I go five foot. If I go five foot, I definitely got to have, I got to have your panels. I don't know. I don't know then. And then also another thing, Kobe don't have no drop eye. Kobe don't have no, his, both of his eyes are good. You know why? Because I feed him from the top. When you feed your fish from the top, they gonna they always have to look up. You get what I'm saying? So they're not gonna have that drop eye. My albino silver got drop eye because when I come in, you know, I'm I'm under the tank. I'm you know, it's looking down at the food. You know what I'm saying? He's looking down, trying to see what I'm doing before I put the food in. You get that drop eye. So that's another reason why I want to keep I want to keep Cody out. Kobe eyes looking good. Yeah, let me uh, see what else we got. Uh, all right. So, uh, um, so regenerative. So, I'm in 50s now, 54. If you're watching other people's tanks on the tube, I don't have the same. I don't have the same energy I use for the work required for the hobby, especially now that I garden pepper and solar yeah i feel you i feel you regenerative i feel that i feel that i hope that uh in 14 years i still got the energy to do this thing but in 14 years my son can help out too but yeah i feel you i feel you it does get us it's a lot it's a lot antoine the new plan is what's up i cannot wait to see those things i appreciate that antoine xavier what's up what's up Check out Sickly Bros. He's building a plywood tank, like you described. Um, yeah, I watched Sickly Bros. Um, I seen that they're building that tank. Um, they're doing a 450 or 475 gallon. But I've also watched a lot of other people that do it on a, a you know, on a high level as well. You know, aquarium domain. Um, I watched Joey King of DIY. So it's just people I've watched. You know, uh, yeah, definitely people I've watched that actually have done those. This corner one was a problem. There's no example of a six foot corner tank. No example whatsoever. It would have been the first of its kind, but it's not gonna come into fruition. It's not happening. Kyle and I, this live has definitely felt like a therapy session. Love the fish community. Yeah, Colin, I definitely noticed that people have come through and uh, you know, Hopefully the therapy helps somebody. It definitely helped me. And uh yeah. Mickey singing, bro. You just sat back. Bro, do you just ever sit back and enjoy what you have? Yeah, Mickey. Yeah, actually I do. I'm very humbled and grateful for what I have. Um, you know, my mom didn't own a house, my dad didn't own a house. 
Um, I don't have a lot of family members that actually own houses. I damn sure don't have a lot of friends that own houses. And then even though we own a house on the, on the level that I have it now, um, yeah, it's, it's a humbling experience. It's humbling. I definitely appreciate what I have 100%. I don't take anything for granted because I remember living out of my car. You know, I remember having all of my, my everything that I own in the trunk. You know what I mean? I know what that I still know what that feel like. Hell, I still know it. Know what sleeping on the jail bunk feel like. I still remember those peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I ain't that far gone from that. You know what I mean? Those those nasty ass spreads. You know, I remember all that. Kelly Bunch, what's going on, bro? How you doing? So, so how do you get your wife to accept the hobby on a scale you got it now? Mine is tripping, but I'm still going to keep going. I guess until she's ready to put us out. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I think I got. I, I feel like I just got lucky. You know, Aida, she's awesome. Uh, she really does support the hobby. She wasn't really into fish part of that, but she's an animal person. You know. Um, she's the reason why, I, one of the reasons why I have birds, uh, you know, we got the little white dog because of her. I, I, I never liked little dogs. I, I was always big dog, pit bulls, bulldog, always had to be a big dog, you know, a protector, you know what I'm saying? But Aida got me onto the little dogs, you know, where she got a little dog and obviously we love our little dog. But uh, yeah, you know, she just has a an appreciation for for beauty you know what i mean uh, she likes her type of fish she likes all the stuff we got too but you know she has some fish that she likes that i don't like um you know and it's a compromise it's a compromise but again i, I got lucky i really got lucky i really did Colin, for the first saltwater tank it'll be a 40 gallon breeder should I do fowler or keep some corals? I won't lie. I'm kind of lazy. All right, Colin, if you're kind of lazy, I will go with the fowler. I will go with the fowler, less maintenance, less equipment needed, and it's easy to correct. Example, if you have nuisance algae growing in your fowler aquarium, just keep the lights off for a few days. Keep the lights off for a week or so. You'll be good. The fish don't care. All the algae, all that nuisance algae, cyano, all that's just going to go away. When you have coral, you don't have a choice. you got to cut the light on every day, and they got to stay on for a certain period of time. My 20-gallon, I am definitely dealing with some cyano in that tank now that I have to figure out how to deal with. So 40-gallon breeder, Fowler, 100%. These who else is waking up thinking about a thousand gallons, right? I am for sure. When I was in school, I cared that people made fun of me because I like fish. But as an adult, now I could care less. It's just how you look at it. Agreed, Cody. Agreed, Cody. Um, in school, I wasn't. I didn't really have like the fish conversations with people. Uh, I was more into, like the reptile. I was like into reptiles. Like I had a snake. I had a five foot red tail boa. I've always been into reptiles. I've been trying to talk Aida to let me get a uh, a black and white tegu uh, to monitor lizard, but you know she's not really she's not really trying to let me get that. I don't even have a space for it. I need a big ass space for it. But yeah, you know, as an adult, you learn that you know you're gonna have fake people that you don't really care about what their opinions are. You know, you're gonna have people that are so fake that they don't even want the world to know what they're really interested in. Uh, you know, so yeah, yeah. Being an adult and understanding that is definitely better than being a kid thinking that what someone else has to say about what your hobby is really matters. You know, forget them. Tim Russell, one of my best parts of your channel is you keep it real and you build everything yourself. The bird aviary, your aquarium stands, digging the huge pond in your front yard, motivated. Yes, sir. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, yeah. Um, I try my best to keep it real as possible, no matter how it's received. You know, it's a, uh, you know, in this day and age, you know, the fake stuff really does a lot better than the real stuff for whatever reason. You know, everyone wants to show their highlight reel. Everyone wants to, you know, be fake. But, you know, 
I, I'd rather be real and, and be accepted for me as I am. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather, you know, I don't even like lying. You get what I mean? Like some people, they just lie just habitually. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, first of all, I'm not going to remember to lie. That's one. And then for two, it's like I'm too old to be lying. You know what I'm saying? I'm too old to be lying to people and fabricating things like that. So I don't really like to do that. But I definitely appreciate any real person that can respect and understand where I'm coming from and they respect the content, all of that. You know, 224 minutes and I've been real this whole time. I haven't told any, I haven't told a single lie. All right. Uh, kind of honestly, after cutting off my friends, it's just my girl and me. My life has gotten a lot better. Plus, I'm just able to do my hobbies and get more done. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right. You know, uh, you know, it's good to have a support. It's good to have friends and things like that. But it's not good to have the fake ones. And the older you get, you know, you end, it end up being like just you and your family. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't have I don't have time to do a lot of hanging out. You know, between me actually running this business, you know, after I go to work. Let me, let me, let me just give you a day. So here's a Monday through Friday. I go to work. I get off work. I've got to do my invoices. Um, I got to find time to make a video and edit the video and put out the video and spend time with the family. And I cook too. My girl cook. She cooks most of the time. But on the nights that I got to cook, I still got to do those things and cook. So it's like my days be full. You know, even the weekend, then I want to rest. You know what I mean? And rest isn't really rest when you got two fish rooms and you know that somebody needs a tank cleaner. You know what I mean? Something has to be done. You know what I mean? So it's always work. I don't, I don't, I don't do a lot of hanging out. You know, when I was young, I hung out a lot more. When I didn't have the fish rooms, I hung a lot, I hung out a lot more. But I rather do this. You know what I'm saying? This is what I rather be doing because, you know, I found myself, you know, in handcuffs <laughs> many a nights when I thought it was the best night of my life. You know, great time, like oh, this is the best day, best night of my life. End up, you know, end up off the streets for 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 some months or a year or two years whatever the case may be so you know i'd rather spend time with my family i'd rather do things in the house invite somebody over you know we could do something here or i could go to their house you know and enjoy it or whatever but i don't do any hanging out no more especially you know i'm 40 you know so i don't i don't you know i don't have time you know i'm not where i want to be in life you know i would love to get to reach financial freedom financial freedom what financial freedom means to me, it means being able to have all of your bills paid without having to worry about where the money is coming from to get them paid. Having the extra ends to extra money to do what I want to do on a monthly, daily, weekly basis, you know, and being able to put money up, you know, for my son as well as myself. All of that taken care of. I want to, like, Every time, every time, every week, you know what I mean? Like, that's financial freedom to me. And I've never experienced it, and I want to know what that feels like. So until I get that, I'm not I'm not hanging out. I'm not kicking it like it's cool. It's business, straight business. All right. Sean says, anytime you can make money enjoying your hobby, it's a huge win. Facts. Facts, 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 Sean. That's what I. That's what I be trying to preach. You know, monetize your life. Monetize your life. You know, I got I got a barber partner that refuses to post make videos. You know, refuse to make videos. Like, why not cut hair? Have somebody recording you cut hair. Show people how to cut hair. So now you are still doing what you normally do, but now you got you also monetizing what you do. So you got some extra coming in from the back end. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I don't know. Some people don't want to get in front of the camera. Some people don't want to open up their life to the camera. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've met some real genuine people, you know, by conversating with you folks just like this. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Different strokes for different folks. Right. Tim, big things have small beginnings. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that saying. I've never heard that before. I really do like that. But that's true. That's very true. 
in today's age, you can start a business based off whatever you like to do. Exactly. Big facts. Big facts. Big facts. People people make content on just talking. Like this this people making money just from watching something else. You know what I'm saying? Reacting to stuff. You know what I mean? Playing video games. You know, my son was a big gamer. I'm like, why don't why didn't you make a channel playing video games? Look at Pootie Pie. Pootie Pie is one of the what was one of the most highest paid YouTubers. Then he started off from playing video games. Yep. I know it's expensive. I own an aquarium sales maintenance business myself. My house is like yours, a couple fish rooms, mostly saltwater reef tanks, and breeding different freshwater angel fish. And okay, I didn't even know that you own an aquarium. That's what's up, Tim. Pack full of knowledge right there. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let me know a little bit more about you. Yeah, man. I would love to see. Do you do you uh make content? Do you are you do you plan on making content? I would love to see your fish room. I would love to see what your fish rooms look like. Xavier, gotta do viewing panels so we can see all the angles. Xavier, did you hear the reason why I didn't want to do the um viewing panels? Cody, what would be a good fish for being an aggressive eater? Looking for something to make some content. Get, get an arowana. <laughs> Lisa Ray is trying to literally move move Tess out the way, trying to go under him. Man, straight bully. But um, yeah, get an arowana. Get an arowana. Pooh Bear, so happy you're successful. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Alejandro, would you consider getting a freshwater pupper such as an MBU and for a hockey pupper? I get that question a lot. Um, I had an MBU. Um, I don't think I would get another freshwater puffer. Uh I already because I got so many, I got so many saltwater puffers. So it would be no reason to get to get a freshwater puffer. You know, what's the name got a quick Co-op. He has his. He has. Uh, what's his? What's his pepper name? Birdie. <laughs> I think it's like Birdie or something like that. And he got that puffer at eight hundred gallon. I'm not. I'm not going to dedicate. Now this would have been a good puffer. This corner tank would have been a good puffer aquarium. But no, I don't think I'm going to do the. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do the freshwater puffer. Kyle, you definitely deserve a million subs. I wish I had a million subs. If I had a million subs, I probably wouldn't. We would. We would probably move out of here and get get a place with a place with some land and and all of that. You know, uh, yeah. A million subs can be life changing. It's like hitting a lotto. You know, everybody don't get there, but it's definitely life changing for sure. Uh, places are so expensive right now. Like I could get a luxury trailer right now with three beds, two baths. For the same price as a one bedroom apartment. Right. Right. That was packed. That was, that was definitely a loaded, a loaded uh counter right there. Facts, facts. I remember back in the day, they had like studios for like 500 bucks. And then all of a sudden, like five years later after that, they changed the name to like lofts. And then those same 500 500 dollars studios. We're now like eighteen hundred dollars, twenty two hundred dollars. It's crazy. It's crazy how expensive it is. It's expensive as hell. But if I told you the mortgage on this house, man, crazy. Uh, let's see, Shamu. I prefer large dogs, small small dogs have small brains. <laughs> Shamu, uh man, uh, maybe you're right, man. My little our little dog is so annoying, man. Like all she barks at everything. If I walk in the house right now, she's gonna bark because I open the door. If I walk into this, if I walk into the other fish room, she's gonna bark. Even when we tell her to stop, she still does it. Like, man, she's just a grumpy little dog. You wouldn't even believe it. She's so grumpy. Get up and just start walking and just uh, just yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Big dogs are definitely 
like prefer in my opinion we get it ladies out here watching this live if you have a good guy working being a man paying the mortgage taking care of family for god's sake let him be with this good hobby he has more <laughs> Yeah, yeah, regenerative. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Cody, what plants you got in your pond when we are trying to get some? Cody, so um, right here is the elephant ear, and then we have the canna back there. So um, there's a lot that you could get. Papyrus is a good one. Um, I was told I'm not going to be able to get some more plants until, until, um, next month in april but if you're able to get like some papyrus get like papyrus i'll show you what that look like papyrus plant so it's actually a really good plant let me uh find a good one. all right all right that's papyrus right there and so it's, it doesn't get that big you could get some papyrus. You could also get the elephant ear if you have, you know, space for it. Um, canna, canna plants is also another good one. But make sure you get you some grow lights. Like these plants only do this well because of the grow lights. If I don't have the grow lights, you know, they need light. You know what I mean? They're meant to be outside. So you want to try to incorporate, you know, them, you know, having that, having that natural light as best as possible. Yeah. Uh, Shamu, I know how I can gain financial freedom leaving California. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I'm not leaving Cali, though. I'm not leaving Cali, though. Cody, exactly this summer I'm going to wear a GoPro while I do my car photo shoots. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, plan on making content very soon. I can't wait. I'll be I'm gonna be one of your first subscribers. Just need to see how many clients are willing to have me record their tanks and search for them. Believe it or not, I'm pretty sure a bunch of them will be willing to. I think they'll be willing to. Yeah, and then fingers crossed, man. Hopefully that work out sooner rather than later. Colin, that's a, that's one of my biggest regrets. I know how to edit. Etc. And I was a competitive gamer. I posted, but it not ended up meeting a nerd. But not ended up meeting a nerd in compression surgery. But, uh, kind of got thrown off by that a little bit, uh, Kyla. You said I posted, but not ended up meeting a nerd decompression surgery. Well, I'm glad that you didn't. Regenerative, I turned 30,000 gallon pool into a koi pot a few years ago. It was beautiful, but my daughter wanted her pool back. So I sold the koi and refurbished the pool. We only lived once. I enjoyed it. Regenerative, man. You could have got her a nice little above the, above the ground pool. Man. 30,000 gallon pool turned into a pond. Yeah. You know, we love our kids, right? We love our kids. I would have said, baby, I'm keeping my 30,000 gallon pool pond. We could get you a we could get you a nice membership to the Y. I could build you, I could just add this nice little above the ground pool right there, put some covering. Build a deck around it. That's it. Oh, man. Sorry to hear that, Colin. Now I got it. Yeah, autocorrect is a, is a... Man. Yeah, that would definitely would stop the game. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm glad you're doing better, though. Man. And the result, I said the hobbies are found, photography slash cars. I actually think what's meant for me also do this. Yeah, 
what kind of cars do you what kind of car did you just get like what kind of car like do you uh do like the fast cars or you reveal like restore like old cars man i love old cars i would love to restore um 70 72 um buick riviere boatail riviere i would love to restore one of those Kyle always, always match if my parents turn their pool into a fish pond. I wish I, man, man, if I if this place would have had a pool, it would have turned into a pond. It would have turned into a pond. Big Zoo, you got me into making a little content. Just a few shorts right now. I'm a beginner with salt water, but I have a 35, 36 being replaced with a 55, but the tank arrived track from clear for life. Sorry to hear that, man. You know, it's a trip house. Sometimes these these tanks come up cracked or leaking. But yeah, what's your um? What's that? What's that YouTube channel called? Or you have TikTok? Or you have? I follow you. Oh, we got grow lights brighter than the sun. So probably you need six pairs of sunglasses on. All right, Cody, you good? You good? Yeah, like I said, the papyrus, the canna, elephant ear. You'll be you'll be straight. You'll be straight. should have told her to just swim with the koi. Yeah, Tim, he should have told her to swim with the koi. I agree. Like I said, I wouldn't have been able to convert that back. That would have to stay as a koi pond. Stay as a koi pond. All right. We have a community large pool in the community. In the community. Yeah, that's what she would have to use. <laughs> yeah. Sean James, if you have an in-ground pool, I'm definitely the type to turn it into a pond. I'm a turtle guy, so I put a bunch of turtles in it. Yeah, Sean. Yeah, if I ever had an in-ground pool, I don't, oh, man, forget that chlorine. That's bad for the ozone layer anyway. Pond. Pond. I have a 2009 Mustang V6 and recently picked up a 2002 Mustang GT. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Those are good. Those are good. You about to have them souped up. You about to have them souped up. I think. I think I have videos of the Koi Pond on my channel. All the videos are look nice. What's your channel called, Regina? If I'm not, I want to check it out. It's regenerative life land. I'm gonna check it out, man. I want to check it out. I dream about having a V8 and finally got one. Man, Colin, I'm glad that I'm glad that you're making your dreams come true, man. Really glad that you're making your dreams come true, man. That's what it's about. That's really what it's about. Makes a Cali fish keeper, late 60s, mid 70s, American muscle for me. That's right. Hey. And they're like, what? You still got the light on? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Whether it's the um, six nine, six nine Merrill, the six, the six four and the six three Mustang. Yeah, yeah, we are, we on man, the Thunderbird. Yeah, ninety five SS Impala. I like the I like the glass house, the glass house in Papa. The ninety five was cool too. Let me make sure that let me refresh my memory. Let me make sure I'm thinking about the same one. Ninety five. I think I, I'm pretty sure I'm on point. You talking about the one like uh like Bookham had on um all about the Benjamins? Let's see. Yeah, Bookham had that thing on on uh. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's the one I thought. That's the one I thought. Personally, I just like modding cars. I don't like fish keeping. With aquascape, my car is a canvas. And I put my taste on it, rims, cosmetic mods. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Man, I got a homie, man. 
he's redoing his whole he likes hondas and he finally got a project honda before he would always just like you know soup it up do all that but he's finally redoing it from the ground up i mean powder coating the frame fresh paint new engine like you know something out of something out of a magazine finally was able to do that and my man when it comes to cars all i care about is gas mileage and reliability so i drive the camry makes me look like i'm 70 years old I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing nice either, man. Uh, right now, all I got is a all I got is a is a, is a Chevy Equinox. All I got is a Chevy Equinox. You know, um, this hobby takes away from any other hobbies that I will be able to get into at the moment. Um, eventually, I want to. I do want to get an old school, and I want to fix it up. But you know, this hobby just takes a lot. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of finances. It's a lot of work. Cars are so expensive. My dad grew up with box buddies and drag raced them. And my uncle is a master mechanic for Ford. Wow, Colin, that's that's amazing. Yeah, so any help that you need, he got you. Such that it takes a thousand followers to go live right now. We got 15 followers and close to two videos. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely yeah, it sucks. It sucks. Even the fact that you gotta have four thousand watch hours and 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 a thousand subs before you're able to monetize. That's that's sometimes that's not easy. It's not easy to get those four thousand watch hours. I just purchased purchased a Tesla AM all EV for now. All thing. Yeah, have you seen that? Have you seen that new Tesla the Cybertruck? Regenerative, have you seen that cyber truck? Would you get that? I think it's ugly. <laughs> I think it's ugly. Uh, I don't have I watch me and my friends put their hair, pull their hair out as their BMWs and Audis will fall apart. Right. Right, 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 right. The BMWs and Audis are always having issues. And it's so expensive to get them fixed. Xavier, I appreciate you, man. You're such a genuine dude. Catch you later. Good night, people. Thank you, Xavier. I really appreciate you, man. You have a good night. Thank you so much. I'm about to probably call it a night, too. It's down here, 11 o'clock. It's, it's 10 53 here. Uh, my uncle has a Rouge Ford Raptor and recently got a 6 9 Mustang. Ooh. He got the car, man. He got the one. He should have got that Merrill, but you know, you know, your uncle, you know, he says he's a poor guy, so that's why he got the Mustang. It's not bad, not bad at all. 63 Ford Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good, that's a good one, Tim. That's a good one. I have three hobbies, aquaponics, DIY solar. How do you mean you need, I need to know more about your DIY solar? I need to know more about that DIY solar. I need solar. If I had solar in this room, I would save so much money. I had solar in the house, not the room, the whole house. I would save so much money. I test drove one, have a video on my page of the cyber truck when I was picking up my car. Yeah, what you think about it? What you think about that cyber truck? Worth it? Worth the price? Like 90000 Damn, Cody, is 1253 there? Yeah. Shamu, my favorite vehicle was my old 2004 Chevy Suburban. Okay, it was super comfortable, and it was made when Chevy actually made reliable vehicles. Gas mileage was terrible, though. Facts. Facts. Those Suburbans damn near with like 12, 13 miles to the gallon on the, on the road. Yeah. For Christmas, I got my dream camera lens. So after I after it gets warm, I'll definitely start cooking. Yeah. What's the dream? What you did? Did you just tell me? What's the dream camera? What what brand is it? Canon. I'm a Ford guy. Would I give my 
Z6 Corvette with that LS3, and I switch to the dark side. <laughs> I love hey, hey Chevy's my favorite make. My Chevy's my favorite make. I love the Corvettes. The new Corvettes are nice. The new Corvettes are nice. But even the old ones, the Stingray. Driving that old paid off suburban was more expensive than gas alone. Damn. Then my new Camry with the car payment and high insurance. 12 miles per gallon. Woo, shit. Yeah. All the people who ain't joined the lives are missing out. <laughs> right. I got a Sony A A7 IV. Yeah, okay. I said uh, A74. Let me see what that looks like. Let me see what that looks like. Sony A7. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. You got that one? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a dream camera. <laughs> Definitely a dream camera. The, all the bells and whistles. Yeah, man. That's what's up. Dreams coming true. Dreams coming true. I love my 2020 Audi RS3. Oh, you got a, hey, Tim, that's a nice car. That's a nice car. We had a 95 Honda Accord four banger and it was slamming. I bet it was. Yeah. Man, Hondas are so durable, man. They so reliable, man. Hondas will give you 250,000 miles, man. Hondas are definitely good cars. I do have a soft spot for the Caddy. I had a Cadillac CTS, man. Cadillacs are good until you reach like 90,000 miles. And then you're going to have, you're going to start having problems. But yeah, Cadillacs, they're super luxury, super comfortable, really nice. But yeah, up to 90,000 miles, trash. Even um, Jaguars. Jaguars over 90,000 miles, transmission issues. I've never watched CRX set. Yeah, 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 Colin. That's definitely a professional grade camera. I didn't even show it. I didn't even show the chat, but yeah, I seen the price on that thing. Yeah, man, that's a small, that's a vehicle. That's a motorcycle. That's 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 a motorcycle right there. Use motorcycle for sure. It better make that money back. <laughs> it better make that money back. And yep, Honda's are immortal. Facts. I almost want to drive up there and just they're at your tanks all day. <laughs> Where you at, Shamu? Traded in 2013 Civic SI sedan for the Audi. Oh, okay, okay. Man, yeah, that was a nice upgrade for that Audi, man. That was a damn nice upgrade. So I never tried salt water, but now I think I'll eventually end up with a big salt water tank full of tanks. Well, you might not be able to have a bunch of tanks. You know, tanks, you know, they tend to fight when you add too many. They tend to fight. But, yeah, man, I hope you do get you a saltwater tank. Main reason why I was able to get the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, that camera's going to make his money back, man. The camera's going to make his money back, that's for sure. Definitely blessed, man, definitely blessed. Like I said, making your dreams come true but thing is though you're in college you're going to school for you know for what you um what you plan on going to school for you about to start your business you know what i mean cyber security is definitely a good job to have so you know you're doing your thing man you, you definitely deserve it you deserve it dream saltwater fish is an emperor angel I definitely want to get another Emperor Angel, and I gotta get that Queen Angel. Those are the those are my two favorite: Emperor Angel, Queen Angel. Sam, you were yeah, man. I know you regret selling that Shelby. Come on now. Oh, 
Oh, you sold the two. <laughs> you sold the L7 Shelby? Damn. Yeah, man. No, oh, you're in Orange County. Yeah, you're not that far. Southern Cal. Southern Cal, man. That's not that far, man. I did, man. They, they sent me out there to work. They sent me out there to work. I remember a few years ago, I had like, I had like 52 jobs to do. All in, uh, all in South Cal. Uh, man, so I was just hitting up multiple cities. You know, I stayed out there 13 days at an Airbnb knocking those jobs out. It was worth it, though. It was worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. Yeah. Have I ever thought about starting a Discord server? I really don't know how. I really don't know how. Got to figure all that out. I'm not that. I'm not that. That tech savvy. I'm learning this. I still been trying to figure out. Like my right now, my friend, my screaming froze this whole time. Like <laughs> it froze a long time ago. So I don't know how to add stuff on my screen. Uh, you know what I mean? I be seeing some people they add stuff on their screen, like their uh, whether like I watch Hot Boy Turk. You know, he got his uh, his his hot sauces on there. He got his cash app on there. I ain't gotta have that on there, but. Um, I don't know how to work it. I need to learn. Oh, it's a way to add. It's a way to allow people to post pics of their tanks. Okay, I need. To, I need to look into starting a Discord then. Yeah, like I said, San Diego is nice. But y'all, check this out. It's eleven oh two here now. I got to cut these lights off. These fish need to rest. I need to rest. I got to be up early for work tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to eat something else again before I go to bed. That's why I'm getting fat. But I appreciate all of y'all, man. I really appreciate all y'all. It was really good talk. It was really good talking to y'all. And, uh, man, we definitely got to do this again. Like I said, next time I had a camera turned around so you could be looking at these fish, I should try to turn it, but it might shut off. What I do is, I'll go ahead and end this, and then I'll turn it. If it cut off, you know, that's what happened. But I might be able to turn this thing around. Might be able to turn this thing around so y'all can see. I'm going to try. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Show the people. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. There we go. Cut off this light right here, though. There we go. Woo! There's the shark right there. Everybody go right there. Where's Lisa Ray? She's about to hit her lap. Here she comes. Lisa Ray is right. Come on. There she go. I don't see her. That's because she's up high. There she go. All right, so yeah, that's what I was looking at the whole damn time. That's what I was looking at the whole time. So we got the shark right here. He's looking all fat, looking good. Got Bart, Tess, the, the, uh, we got King right there, Panther Grouper, and Lisa Ray is doing what she does best, hitting backflips. <laughs> All she, that's all she's been doing this whole time. That's all she's been doing this whole time. But yeah, so yeah, next time I had a camera facing this way so y'all could also see that because um, it's definitely a nice sight to see. But yeah, I appreciate all y'all for sticking around and chilling with your boy. I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Y'all have a great night. See you next time. Peace.